Oh, that's me. Uh, I'm coming to you still from Louisiana. What's the weather like there? It's absolutely lovely here, Garrett. It's um, fall, about 75 degrees. Uh, humid, though. But but really, when, you, when you're down south and, you know, it's kind of like mid-warm, you know, <laughs> You know, California's fabulous. And, and then New York is nice, but I don't care if it's raining in New York or snowing or the sun shining. The the concrete and the horrifying uh, multicultured people that you have to look at ruins the whole view. Correct, Mr. Rocker. What? <laughs> that is untrue. Well, I, I so you get up and... A light rain passed through, and I opened the, the door, and, you know, there's, you know, the bright sun, and a bird comes down, and a, you know, butterfly bites on something, and, uh, you know, I have my coffee, and walk out in the front, and it's quiet. I mean, there's some beer cans around. There's some activity from the evening before, but it's, you know, it's nice, right? Does it and, smell you know, of urine? No, no, not in, no, they stopped. There's a guy, he sold the company, but, um, it's like SD, like, what is it? A sexually trans, STD, SDT was the company. And when he would go into restaurants, he would get a standing ovation. He was a young guy and he, and he owned, or his family must have owned this trash hauling company. He started at night spraying the French Quarter streets down and power washing them with a citrus scented cleaning fluid. And so after all of the vomiting and the, you know, self defecation and the, you know, the very thing you're talking, all the $1 big ass beers being spilled everywhere, he got a contract and he started spraying the French Quarter. So the French Quarter after midnight smells fantastic. He ended up selling the company for some a uh, huge amount of money, and he used to get standing ovations in restaurants. And the people said he was going to run for mayor. And once the mayor, that guy Ray Nagin, wanted to cut uh, the budget or something in New Orleans, and he was going to, you know, cut the guy's budget from spraying the street citrus. No, oh, everyone went crazy. What I said to him is that I thought they should go around to all the bars and have all of the bars take the daiquiris, the margaritas, um, what what else would have sweet? Uh, is there a sweet drink that you drink sometimes, Christina? A sex at the beach? Cosmo. A Cosmo, right, right. By the way, have you ever met a sex up your ass? Have you ever had that drink here? Nope. That has a lot of Kahlua in it. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I just thought of that, and I have to tell you, I, I don't care if anybody else thinks that. I have funny. had a mudslide, though. <laughs> <laughs> Remember Nell Carter, the big uh, rotund, you know, African-American? Yeah, give me a break. She was doing some show, and, you know, I, I guess I, she's de she's dead now, I think. She was drinking and, and purportedly maybe even, you know, doing you know, maybe imbibing in some drugs or whatever. Who knows? But her life was spiraling out of control. And the reason why it didn't go all the way down, Garrett, is she was actually too large to fit into the drain. <laughs> <laughs> so it just spiraled. and then... <laughs> So she was being, you know, sucked into the abyss. But her ass was so big, the abyss could not take all of her. And that's why it took so long for her to finally, you know, and her demise. Hmm. A friend of mine was doing a sitcom, a new sitcom, and they had Don Rickles as a guest star on the sitcom, or vice versa, they had Nell Carter come in as a guest star. So they had rehearsal, and it gets to be like 11 and 12 o'clock, whatever, and it's lunchtime, so they call, you know, lunch. And he goes into his dressing room. When he comes back out, Nell Carter is passed out on a couch, uh, snoring with one leg sticking out of her dress over the side of this couch. And Don Rickles walks by and goes, oh, look at this mudslide. <laughs> <laughs> and I got to tell you, um, that's the funniest description of a human being passed out on a couch I've ever heard. 
So he was on uh, you, Jimmy Kimmel yeah. last night. Don Rickles. He's really he's still yeah, is he still funny? You know he he's can, still um, funny and he's still touring. Yeah. He had some One night, out a few years ago. And you know, I idolized him when I was young. I literally idolized him, and I I loved Woody Allen, and I loved Don Rickles. I liked that that style. It's funny. I started out imitating Bill Cosby and and Woody Allen, and I guess because I could, uh, I don't know why. I, Cosby had played football and was sort of a jock type of a guy, and he became a comedian. And he started in San Francisco at a place called the Hungry Eye, and mm-hmm. This guy from Mississippi was the manager of of the club. Uh, I think it was the Hungry Eye. It was the manager of the club, and I read an article, and it said, ooh, this Mississippi manager gives black comic his first break. Well, once you get to San Francisco, you're not a guy from Mississippi anymore, you know. People don't come from Mississippi, move to New York, and go, hey, Hope there are no blacks in this area. I mean, you know, you just stop that. You know, it's you're like a hip southern person when you move to these areas. But I really, you know, Cosby was a um, a running back and a defensive back for for Temple Hofstra. Oh, one of his famous routines was about playing football, and and the coach. Uh, they, 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 they're in the locker room. They hadn't won many games and they were just about to play some powerhouse like Temple. And the coach says, now you gotta get out there. You gotta, you gotta realize what we're fighting for, man. And he gives this impassioned speech and Cosby, of course, does it, you know, for like five minutes. He goes, nah, and he says, we were standing up. We were all crying. We we're ready to go. Come on, man. Let's go get them. And he says, we run and the door's locked. And, and it would make me die laughing, you know, because I listened and I went, that's kind of, I bet that's a true story. Or he talked about his brother or his mother or, or, or whatever, right? So I was just crazy about Cosby. But Rickles, I loved all that put down stuff. I just couldn't believe, I told you, you know, we make fun of it, but I went to Vegas to get him to make fun of me. And I just didn't know that comics weren't thinking of it on the spot. I mean, I was, you know what? I, I keep, I still can't believe that. It's true though. I mean, I'm hysterical in the car, but if I went right on a stage right now, I wouldn't remember any of the stuff I thought of. <laughs> I wouldn't, you know, uh, gee, you were, you were saying something about the uh, economy in the car that was pretty funny. Yeah. Yeah. There's a bunch of people here now. I don't remember it. I don't remember that. That's what happens. You kind of, it's like when you're driving home and you're going to give your, your wife or maybe women do the same. You're going to give your husband or somebody close to you a speech. So you give the speech in the car. I'm not going to take it anymore. You know, uh, I came in the other day and I've, I've asked you a hundred times, you know, please, if you're, if you're not going to be home on time or we're not going to, we're not doing something that we planned, you know, just call me, just text me, you know, but for God's sakes, don't let me walk in. Now you're, you're in, behind the wheel of the car, you're walking down the street, you're talking to yourself. I mean, you're going to give it to them or your boss. You know what? I work my fucking ass off at this place. I mean, I work my fucking ass off, and then you give that fucking jerk off the fucking assignment? Why? That's crazy. I mean, 15 fucking years. You go home. (laughs) There she is. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, you know, I tried to call. It was whatever bullshit excuse. And, but you know, I, I didn't have time to. And you go, all right, it's okay, it's all right. Okay. You walk into the boss. Hey, man, how you doing? I'm okay. How you doing? Good. What's going on? Nothing. I'm good. I'm fine. Like that. And you do that so they'll ask you something so you can maybe. You won't yell, but you want to maybe, you know, tell them the story. They don't even ask. As soon as somebody says something to me like, so you okay today? Yeah. Yeah, I'm fine. That's it. I don't say anything else. Because that means they want to tell you something. When people say, how are you? I go like this. I'm perfect. And it really throws them. They go, well. (laughs) Well, so two days in a row, when I go into a store, I go in like I'm on a mission. 
And I guess when I'm not smiling, Christina, maybe you can say, when I'm not smiling, people must think I'm a mean person if I'm not smiling. Mm -hmm. you, or you're focused. Thank you. You know what? You're you're one of the few women that gets me. Oh, thanks. Yeah. I read about Bourdain today. Do you know that his wife, he's like almost 60 years old. His wife is 34 years old. She was this wild Italian. And she had fallen in love with an Irish rock and roll singer who did not want her to come to New York, could care less. She gets $300. She leaves her home in Italy, young, great-looking, you know, brunette, and moves to New York with no money, and it doesn't work out with the Irish rock and roller. So she's at something or other, and she see, oh, she's a, like a waitress at a restaurant or, a, you know, like the hostess or whatever, and, and Anthony Bourdain comes in. And there's this wild, tattooed Italian girl. She's like 27 years old or something like that, right? Love at first sight. And they drink and they do drugs and they smoke and they go out and they get matching tattoos of knives on their asses or whatever. And they fuck and they eat and it's Anthony Bourdain, and he's handsome, tall, and she, and they're eating and all that. And one day, she meets a um, martial art person, and she goes down to their whatever. Now, remember, he's rich. She no longer has to be a waitress. So her job is being young and fucking him. That's her job, young and fucking him. She goes and starts doing martial arts. And now, Garrett, she's ready to fight. She's going to be. <laughs> she's a fighter now. She's going to fight. Like MMA? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's going to fight. He's really no into smoking. that, so I could see that. Well, no, she she may have gotten him into it. He, she's oh, going to fight. Yeah, Anthony Bourdain. But I'm reading that today, and I go like this. God damn it, that's what I should have done. You know? Here's what always happens. I would meet somebody, and they're crazy about you. And I'm exciting. I'm a great date. I take you out. I show you stuff. I don't. I don't do anything. I, sex is going to be easy. So there's nothing to it. You, you, if you're a great date, if you can dance, if you take them to a great place, sex is no problem. All of this. How am I going to get them in bed? And how, you don't have to worry about it. Women fuck the guy who's nice to them. It's, it's such a simple formula. They'll fuck the bad boy, and and as you get older, and I'm a total square and anything but a bad guy. I have none of that bad guy in me. I can act like it, but the, every Italian guy goes, hey, what the fuck? And about 4% of them are really tough, okay? The other 96% of Italian guys are basically Jewish guys from Sicily. That's all it is. It's the only, that's the only difference, right, you know? And probably the same amount of Jewish guys are tough, Garrett. Wouldn't you say that? About 4%? Maybe 4% Jewish. I don't know. But they're all, all the ones in Israel are tough. Oh, oh, I told you about the woman I dated. It was like a man. She was in the army and everything else. And every guy we went out with had a big scar on its head from a bomb going off in a jet that he was fighting the Arabs. I would go, you were in a goddamn jet and a bomb went off? Yeah, with a big scar on his face. I want more Lavatkia. Okay, fine. Whatever you want. Oh, no. I wouldn't fuck with an Israeli. I wouldn't fuck with an old Israeli. They're ready to fight. That's the group that left Germany or left Russia or whatever and said, you know what? Never again. And they meant it. They meant it. Right. You know, I have started so many conversations. Oh, the Bourdain thing. So you meet these and you have a great time and they're crazy about you. And they like you, and you have sex, and it's all fine and everything else. But when they really get to know you, and and I, you know, I still have a good time. What what really drives them crazy is is really that's all I really am. I'm a good date. I'm never going to be that deep. And when I get deep, it seems to aggravate people. Like if I talk politics, the other night somebody was talking politics, and it was a room full of Democrats, and they were positive I was a Republican and was going to vote for Mitt Romney. All of them thought that. And when I announced that, that that's not – because I, you know, say, you know, everybody's a, a public servant, and I don't think they're bad people, and I don't think – you never hear me say the, 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 uh, 
the elected officials are crooks. I never say that. I don't believe it. I mean, there are a bunch of them. There are. I come from one of the most crooked states in the union next to Chicago, which isn't even a state but has that many people under arrest in Newark, New Jersey, and Atlantic City. There's Louisiana. Crooked as hell, right? But they're not all, they're not all crooks. So once the women realize that I'm really, I'm fun to go out with and I like to have sex and like to play around and go on trips and spend, but I have no interest in these, in these discussions. I just don't have any interest. I, I was sent a thing today where they, they, there's a, a group coming out, Christina, called why does America hate vaginas? It's a, I bet you Alex Bennett will have these people on. And I looked at it and thought, you know, that sounds like our show. And then it says, spoiler alert, the answer, no, does America hate vaginas? Spoiler alert, yes. Mm. And I'm going, it's a group. It's a group. It's like they don't give us equal pay and... It's not about a vagina. I, it's so funny. It's like that woman that came on and wrote the book about the vagina. The name of the book shouldn't have been the vagina. No, it was the a, ca- a, it was it was an, about trying to find her pussy. No, no, that's your woman. We had oh, we had a woman Gina on Gershon. Friday. Oh, 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 please, Gina Gershon's well, publicist you, well, said nobody on, knows well, who the fuck a, you are. Write a book with pussy you, in it. You, you went on well, a I have a about kitten. that, so well, I figured you're... that's what you were talking. Please, about. Please, no, no, it was the uh, it was Naomi Wolf. And so, Garrett, the name of that book should not have been Vagina: A New Biography. It should have been, you know, Bitchy Women: A New Biography, not Bitch. Bitchy, because guys don't like her because she's full of shit. And, and because her dad or somebody didn't treat her properly, you gotta put up with all that bullshit when you go out with them. Why? Why? It isn't what about kind of your vagina. What are you talking about? What was she just high maintenance? When you go to dinner, I don't give a flying fuck about equality and shit when I'm having a meal. I don't give a shit about all that. Who cares? I don't care about that. I don't want to, I don't want to discuss that. You know? If you work someplace, and you don't make the amount of money. No, because it's not about the, I mean, the books are not about vaginas. They're about, the, the woman that offered me, does America hate vaginas? It's about equal rights or some bullshit about abortion right, or the whatever. the vagina is a symbol of the woman. It's not. Yes, it is. The woman's is. fucking head and mouth no. are a symbol no. of the woman. It no. is. That's the symbol of you, J. Tom. No, not it, women. the vagina is a symbol of having sex with something no, that's not. enjoyable. What about what? To, oh my goodness, that's not the only. The, as a whole, though, you your men personality. Do not have... No, your personality overrides. Anything I would think about your vagina. But there's so much going on in the news right now about uh, about things concerning our vagina. So that takes on a whole thing also. Like, you know, the contraception and the abortion and all of those things concerning our vagina. On top of the fact that we have a vagina, the vagina represents us. I totally disagree. I think that when men hear women (laughs) talk... And they and they say vagina, they have, you know this. They send all kind of ridiculous, you know, tweets and messages to us and everything else. It's it's like it's like when a guy would say something about his equality and he would write the book, you know, my penis. Who who would think that's about equality or manhood or if I wrote my my penis, a new biography, it would be four pages. I mean, there, nobody fights for the rights of my penis. You fight for my rights. You fight for make sure that I'm not yeah, fucked at my job. Yeah, but your penis is just fine. Your, the rights of it your penis is, is not, ju- it, just fine. Yes, they are. You can do whatever you want. It's a sex organ. It should are, not define you. Are you just mad because you. you thought that you were going to see vagina and you turned out that it's just no. a women's group? I, I could see it's a from shocker the... shocker word. Right. I could attention. see from the middle. No, because... If they named the book what it really was, nobody would buy it. So women use the thing, women authors and pub- publicity people, use the, the name of a thing to get hopefully a man or whoever, women too, interested, but they don't mean. So the vagina is just a word to get them interested, 
but the subject has nothing to do with the vagina. It has to do with you as a person, a female, different chromosomes, different a different gender. It's not about your vagina. It sort so, of is about our vagina still. I disagree, but anyway. Well, you know what? You're just jealous because you don't have one. You can't What's so flash funny is that? Around. No, but that's such a cliche, stupid thing it's to powerful. say. It, no, it isn't. It is. No, it isn't. I've never. Nobody's vagina has ever ruled me, <laughs> and, and <laughs> will never rule me. I've said this before. You see these guys, and you go, "Why, why did you marry this this fucking bimbo?" Or, or why did who was the the um, Richard Mulligan? Why did he marry the woman, the the porno woman? who was famous for anal sex and and all of that and they go oh man you know the way the way the woman had sex with him he could well after you come why would you continue forward with going let's get married or let's be together after you come you ought to look at him and see him for what they are you know if somebody's fucking you and they're they're not nice or they're an idiot why would you you know I know guys that left their wives because their secretary blew them and their wife wouldn't. I mean, I've actually been in their company and they're getting married to the, and sometimes the secretaries weren't even good looking. I'm thinking, man, you're going to be miserable, miserable. You can't base it on that. So women shouldn't base their politics on the vagina. We aren't now, basing our politics on the vagina, but for some reason in this election, especially it comes up. And so we have to defend it. More women, they say, are for Mitt Romney. You make me sound like that naggy thing that you're describing before. No, no, I, I don't. And, and I, oh no, you know something? I've always had great respect for you. And oh, I, I know, but I, I'm saying I just I'm don't like when I'm you do the cliche. I don't like when you do the cliche. That is a, a bad joke when someone says you're just jealous because you don't have a vagina. If you want to really sound different in the world, don't use any cliches ever again. I, I, Ever again. How about this one? How was it? Well, a little of this, a little of that. You don't want to ever say that either, Garrett. You know? How do you well, feel about some... Menza Menza? Don't say any of that. <laughs> Nothing that that people normally say uh, in the majority, don't say it anymore. Mm -hmm. You know? But I should, if, if I ever get a show, should I open it up and talk about how despicable all of these foreigners that are around me are? Is that okay? There's a way to do it <laughs> that I, I wouldn't open with that. <laughs> uh, but there's a way to do it. You know, um, and 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 of course we've gone. I don't know what we what we had planned, uh, and and the meeting is out the window now, Garrett. We do have a guest coming up at the bottom of the hour, and watch this one. Here's a cliche, Garrett. Christina's got me so upset. I forgot. <laughs> uh, Garen James will be here, creator of Cowboys for Angels. It's a gentleman escort service, and he's also on Showtime's Gigolos. Now, I'll tell you this about women. I don't think they're that interested in escorts. Are they, Christina? Guys are no, interested in this guys, show. Yeah. yeah. So this guy's going to come on and pretend he's got these guys for these women and about, you know, Four women watch the show, and gay guys are home, you know, masturbating in their 10-gallon hat. Um, now you got me off again. You got me. Oh, I was going to say this. Everyone, uh, you know, doesn't want to. They, they don't know what to do about foreign people or gay people or or whatever. You you don't have to like them. I mean, I don't like a whole group of people, groups of people. You don't have to like them. You have to accept them. That's all it is. Like, I'm telling you right now, I, I hear a boom box or I see a, you know, a flaming six foot three inch transsexual person or I hear somebody bitching or I hear some Indian guy jabbering or, you know, Vietnamese with that high fucking wow, 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 that thing. I can't stand them, but I have to accept them. That's the difference. I mean, I was in a bar the other night. There are these really incredibly wealthy Vietnamese in Louisiana who were allowed into the United States and became immediate citizens, and and they became uh, fisher people on the Gulf Coast, especially. There are there, there maybe be, there's probably a million of them. They make untold amounts of money, 
and lots and lots of them died during Katrina. But since nobody knows exactly who they are or how many there are, there, there weren't any counts. There might have been thousands of them. And they have rolls of money, and they go to casinos all the time. So the other night I happened to be in, in a casino. And I was enjoying myself, and I was, you know, having a cocktail, and I was starting to play a few cards. And I see these young Vietnamese guys, and I know that their parents are these wealthy fisher people. And it's uh, women, and, and they're speaking kind of good English, and then they start with the Vietnamese jabbering, and they're really loud, and they're the typical kind of rich people, right? Except add the Vietnamese thing to it. And I'm sitting there thinking whatever you can imagine an evil person thinking about these people they're loud they're not from around here but they were born here and they still have the fucking accent and they're speaking and you know they speak in the foreign language so you don't know what they're saying and all that kind of shit if i could have got if i'd have had a pool cue garrett i would have liked to have swung the pool cue they're all about five feet one and just right along my nipple line here just swing it and hit all their fucking heads and knock them out (laughs) so they would shut they're fucking Vietnamese jabbering mouths. That's how I felt. But I totally accept them. I totally accept them. They belong here. I'm glad the government allowed their families in, you know, as citizens and everything else. Does that does that make sense now? That's you know, that that's what people don't get. You just have to accept it. You don't have to have everybody come to you. Like when you when you see these T V commercials and they're sitting around a bonfire and they're having beer. And you got black guys with white guys, and you got a Japanese guy, and you got, and, and I go, where do, where do you see this mix in America? I never see it, except in a sitcom or in a beer commercial. How many times do you see a housewife walking down the street? Let me tell you what you usually see. You see about a six foot tall, fat white girl with about a five foot three inch uh, Asian girl with big giant glasses. That's usually what you see. Because they're both outcasts, you know, at the community college. So they become good friends. I mean, it's all like, you know, Animal House. That That's really, that's how they, normally we all kind of stick with our own group, right? Tonight, black people are going to have black people come over. Asians are going to have Asians come over, you know. Uh, white people are going to have white people come over, Episcopalians have Episcopalians. And then every now and again, they add something to the mix. But generally, no. Nah. We all stick to our tribe, but we have to accept everyone. Don't have to like them. That's difficult for people to understand. Gary, this is all part of the Church of Sensible Christianity. You don't have to like, you have to accept. In fact, I would have people turn next to their neighbor, and you know how they shake hands in church sometimes, right? And they would go like this. I want you to do it now, Garrett. I want you to shake Christina's hand. Would you shake it for me? And repeat after me, both of you. Mm-hmm. I may not like you. I go may ahead. I not like you. you. Oh, but I accept you. But, but I, I accept, accept you. you. No matter how much you bother me. No, no matter, matter how, how much you bother, bother me. me. Well, I don't know about you, but what a segment. <laughs> My hand feels sticky now. Uh, well, you see, you don't have to like shaking his hand. <laughs> you just have to accept it. <laughs> so we have talked about a tremendous amount, and in a few moments we have a guy coming on, and I don't have all the notes because I couldn't I couldn't open it. So, so this uh, TV show, Gigolos, have you ever watched it, Garrett? Yes, many times. <laughs> Liar. I swear. Yeah. You really have? Yeah. What's it about? Because you know, it's I couldn't like open soft my porn. computer's down. It's a soft oh. porn, you know, uh, Skinamax show or Showtime. But what what do they want? I mean, is it an acting show or is it about real so, supposedly it, gigolos? It's going supposed out to be r- real gigolos going out right? on dates and banging girls. But it's obviously but are the women sad. attractive? Not really, which makes it sort of real. Wow, that is real. They're That's like, like hung. Older, right. you know, mostly older, a little weird looking, but sort of hot, you know. Yeah, then they pay. How much do they pay? Uh, I don't think they say on the show, but according to the prep here, it's like uh, $300 an hour. You know what? I'm going to tell you this. Would you work for 300 bucks an hour? <clears throat> the woman comes over, you dress in a nice suit, 
and you you take them out. You're nice to them. You have a nice date. Now you're like six nine hundred bucks into the evening, yeah. and even though they're not maybe physically what you want. You take them home, and now, you know, you're going to make this thing go away in about an hour. And they have cocktails and all, and you walk away with like $1,200, $1,500. But you have to have sex with them. And yeah. it would be, you know, older than you. I it, just it don't know like if I could gift. do it if I'm not attracted to the person. <clears throat> I don't think I could fake it. Like, I'm, I'm all for it if the person's hot or there's some chemistry no. between us. But if there's nothing there, I don't know if I could. No. Or the See, breath in this stinks one. or something. <clears throat> Well, I don't know. See, I don't know. How do women do it? Millions of women do it. How do the porno stars do it? I don't know. How do prostitutes do it? They just, you know what? They don't like the guys they're fucking, but they accept Visa and MasterCard. <laughs> oh. That's okay. If you're not laughing, we'll laugh for me. Uh, let's welcome Michelle Obama. You ought to have a book out that says... <laughs> My ass, a new biography. <laughs> well, I don't think you're going to be in the White House next year, so you better, you better do That's something what fast. That's I'm hoping for. That's what I'm hoping for, baby. I can't take this shit. I don't want to be around with white people either. You That's know, I'll right. stick with my own people. Yeah. Now, what are you dressing as for Halloween? What are you going to go out as this ho Halloween? I'm going as, uh, I think I'm going as, uh, what's Mitt Romney's wife's name, the white bitch? <laughs> You're going to go as Mitt Romney's wife. <laughs> yeah. Hey, you know what you ought to do? You ought to, you ought to, you ought to tape like, like little baby dolls all around you. So it looks like you have like oh, yeah. 10 baby dolls all over you. So, yeah. So, so what made you, what, what, what made you call us, uh, Michelle? I'm Nick Ron, I'm Nick Ron, his wife, and this is my sister wife, Ellen. Ah. Yeah, that's actually a good outfit. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, uh, let's be honest. Garrett would fuck a snake if it had a wig on it. So let's, you know, don't try to If you, if you had a, if, yeah. It'd have to be yeah. fine, because all Garrett knows is fine women. Unbelievably fine gals. Hey, $1,500, Garrett. I would I would sleep with your mother in that dugout canoe paddling up the river, you know, to see the uh, young boys go down on the old men. Uh, yeah, yes, I'm sorry. Buy, that would buy you a lot of smokes, Garrett. Yeah. Hey, um, Are you ever going to have a fucking joke, or we're just going to sit here? Well, shut the fuck up, baby. I'm trying to get to it. Go ahead. You know what the problem with a binder full of women is, right? A binder full of women? Now, what's the problem? The pages get stuck together. All right, that's it. Get rid of him. Garrett, get rid of him. Get her, rid of her, him. Her, her. Uh, her. Yeah, get rid of her, I mean. That's right. <laughs> we might have to have a meeting about this. And stay where you are because from the Showtime show Gigolos and uh, get, get a woman uh, toward the radio. Uh, find people that think they might want to hire an escort because we'll tell you all about it next. Garen James, the creator of Cowboys for Angels, which are gentleman escorts, and is also on uh, Showtime's Gigolos. Uh, is he there yet? Ready to go? Bottom of the hour. Bottom of the hour? What, what time do Top you Top of the hour, whatever. Four <laughs> o'clock. Whatever. Oh, I thought is. it was going to be at 3.30 Eastern time. Nope. Oh, that. you know what? I You know why I apologize? I don't have any of the notes in front of me because I'm, I'm having... I'm having computer problems here. So, oh. and, you know, I can't rant and, you know, compute at the same time. Did you ever send me the new thing? Yep. Yeah. Uh, the company is asking what we have planned uh, for Election Day. Um, kind of just making fun of people and fucking around, is it? I thought I could answer those. Um like, what are, what are Cavino and Rich going to do? They're going to do a dude bro kind of election special? I guess so. Well, one of the vice presidents would like an answer. And <laughs> we better have another one of our meetings. <laughs> we, you know. Would I be invited to this meeting? <clears throat> sure. Well, you got to think of something. Uh, if you go to J. Thomas Show at Gmail, and there's also some other addresses, right, Jared? If you go, uh, Jared, uh, Garrett, if you go to 
uh, jthomas.com. Are there other email addresses? To send to the I don't know. I don't know. Are there other addresses that people send things to? I don't know. No, not that I know of. <clears throat> yeah, okay. I haven't checked any. <clears throat> um, people send to Facebook, but... You had your son on. Send those over to me, too. Would you? Right. you send those over, too? Sure. Yeah, go ahead. Absolutely. Uh, you had your son, JT, on yesterday, and, and you played a record that Kathy Lee and Hoda played Seven Day Weekend. Played it this morning on NBC, uh, showed the lyrics, and screamed that this is the best record. Wow. <laughs> Kathy Lee and Hoda. Uh, dear Jay, coming out of England... How the shape of a man's urine stream can diagnose prostate problems. Change in the wavy pattern of a man's urine stream could could indicate problems with urine flow. Could detect life-threatening prostate problems. Now, it depends on what I've been drinking, if I've been lying down or standing up, whether... Whether I have a – is yours – now, you had the kidney stones. Does yours wave now? Do your kidneys wave around? I mean, your flow? No, but I did notice before mm -hmm. my uh, my attack yeah. for about a oh, year. Oh, an attack. You had a horrible attack mm -hmm. now? My disease. And hey, by the way, when are, we gonna, when are you going to wear that yellow ribbon and we're going to march for kidney stones? <laughs> is that ever coming? <laughs> I'll do that in a minute. <laughs> you know what you need to make it? A bicycle thing so that it really presses on your balls. <laughs> <laughs> you know, something. Um, and you've had them too, haven't you, Christina? Would yep. you wear the, the, the urine yellow ribbon of, 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 of not prostate cancer for those of you out there who are going, I'm dying and you're making fun. No, no, I would not do that. Uh, I'm talking about kidney the stones, horror yeah. of kidney stones, which, by the way, I shouldn't make fun of because I am scared to death of any kind of problem down there at all. So is yours wavy now or bloody? What is it, Garrett? Now it's fine, but about a year prior to it, mm -hmm. I noticed that every time or a lot of time I went to pee, it would be split stream. Oh, that's because there was a stone in there. I don't. I think it's more there was like an infection or something, and it was like pus or something sticking in there. Yeah, that's what I mean. I mean, I guess it was. Yeah, it was, yeah. It's like after you have sex, you know. But I thought it was just because I was getting older, and then after this whole thing, now I'd never have it. Well, of course not, because you don't have that infection anymore. Yeah. I mean, you spit one of those babies out. And you thought nothing of it, just just what last week, right? Mm. Yeah. It was like two bing, weeks ago. Yeah. Bing. The prostate is a small donut-shaped gland that lies directly under the bladder and surrounds the uh, urethra, the tube that removes urine from the body. Jay, as you grow in age, it starts to compress and narrow. Yeah, it just depends. If I drink a lot of booze, I pee a lot. And, and if I if I'm lying down for a while or whatever, but but I have a pretty strong stream. I'm pretty lucky, and I do drink a lot of water. But see, now I'm nervous. Now I'm really nervous. You know when when you have the tap in the kitchen and you have to take that screen off and there's all kinds of dirt and stuff in there sometimes. Mm -hmm. Oh boy, that's what they that's what they showed a picture of. Grinders. Yeah, I don't like being fooled with down there. And also, I drink um, cranberry. Doesn't that, doesn't that kill stuff? Yeah. Uh, this comes from Michael. Recently, I sent you a very pleasant email thanking you for the enjoyment you gave me and what do I assume um, many others. And um, I also asked if you were going to stay a while and if you were going to sign a new contract and, and be on the air, you know, into the next year. You responded with a resounding, go fuck yourself. <laughs> Coming from you, this is one of the highest compliments and exactly the response I was hoping to get. Best regards, Mitch. Dear Jay, as I look now at a framed 8x10 glossy that you sent me, even though I am banned from ever calling the show, 
I don't know who this is, Garrett. Who have we banned from ever calling the show? Who could it have been? Really? You just banned Michelle Obama from calling, I think. Oh, you know what? I'm getting sick of him with that thing. I have liked the show better without Shuley. We get to hear more of you, more ex uh, temporaneous conversation, and actual candor among you, Garrett, a.k.a. someone with a chunk of snot stuck in the back of their throat, and Christina. My point is that the three of you make a great team. You get pissed at each other. You collaborate. You know what? Let me stop this right here. There is no team. If they were wiped away in a flood tonight, two other idiots would be repl would replace them. <laughs> And you would enjoy Paco and Gabriella, okay? Because that's the way I would go, I think. By the way, Jay, do you think that Christina looks like Penelope Cruz? Yeah, with those uh, those eyebrows that look like two caterpillars getting ready to mate. <laughs> you know what? I don't need all of this. You know, I told you yesterday that I had to listen to Jim Rome run this ridiculous speech by some now I'm I'm hearing he's an you know a Notre Dame linebacker which makes it even stupider uh, about how he plays football for his family and not the money and all that stuff and then after that he gets like a 5 minute call that some guy tell him how great he is and what he does for him and all that and he stays completely silent and he comes in and he goes well, thank you very much thank you very much and I'm thinking are you kidding Wants to hear that, especially on a men's sports program. I don't want to hear all of that. You know, what is that? Sometimes when people are complimenting you, it's because they want to stay on the air. They want to be on the air. They know if they compliment you, they'll, they'll hear their voice. So they're using, you know, the, it's like the idiots that call QVC. Do you realize that 90% of the people that call the shopping networks, it, there's something mentally wrong with them? That they, are these obsessive compulsive shoppers and the the ridiculous individuals that run that multi billion dollar you know television channel people will drop dead next to them and they keep talking i think if christina dropped in front of us we would probably play one of my son's records and administer to her. <laughs> we would do something you wouldn't just go, are you okay, and the show goes on, would you, Garrett? You'd go, hey, you know, yeah, yeah. Christina passed out, you know? I mean, we'd, you know, we'd, we'd go to a best of or something. So they have no backup there. I would like now to see at QVC two of them drop at the same time just to see what they do. <laughs> Cameraman, I, step right in. The floor manager comes in with the headsets, right? Hi, my name's uh, Nick, and I, I don't usually do this. They should but, have understudies. Uh, you, you ever had that Arizona iced tea? We got it on sale, two cents a can. Uh, Robert says, Jay, no bullshit, Kevin stole the show on Tuesday. He told a very scary subway story, something that those of us that live in the great Northeast can relate to. He was quick-witted. And he actually balanced the show with just a handful of gay references. It actually sounded like he was being honest with you on the air. Well, he was. Because he comes in here with all of his covering up bullshit. You know? Comes in here with the, the, the yoke of gayness around his neck. And he's not, not, not honest. Like I told him when we went to Hooters, I don't think his uh, daughter, when he brought his 12-year-old daughter to Hooters, <laughs> to show her life on the other side. That didn't come out right. Like when we went to Hooters with his daughter, and I said, I don't think your daughter likes all the gay stuff. And he says, oh, yes, yeah, she does. No, she doesn't. I can see it in her eyes. You don't want your dad or, you know, your two, you know, two women going in the room and all. You don't even, you know, most kids don't even want their, their mom with some boyfriend going in the room. I love these people who, when they have, a, a kids, that they don't let the boyfriend move in or they don't let the girl, they wait till after the kids are up and out and driving or, or whatever. 
it's always was creepy to me when I go pick up uh, my girlfriend or something in high school and and her mom's boyfriend was in the living room and and they always look like the bad guy from like a country video they never look like they're going to be a dad never ever the dad looked like a dad right like you know you know Mr. Bill Hust he and his wife broke up and i was friends with Billy Bill Hust so i started going to Billy's house and his mom has this boyfriend and the boyfriend had like a motorcycle and kind of slick hair and the whole thing and then Billy would go visit his dad and i would go over there sometime and his dad looked like a dad you know regular guy looked like a dad and then she marries the boyfriend and his name became Billy Benson i'll never forget this somehow the scumbag new dad adopted Billy Bill Hust and became Benson but i remember that his dad really was crazy about him so i don't know what the hell happened i was a little kid and he and the guy the new guy didn't even act like his dad really you know weird and if you're going to marry somebody with kids you know don't let them know you're fucking their mother in the other room screaming and yelling and pounding on the door i don't want to hear all that no one wants to hear all that and don't be kissing them and all that that's disgusting kids hate that stuff hate it once a couple came over to our house for Thanksgiving and they were kissing and hugging. And one of my sons says to me, you know, they're, they're being, you know, more affectionate. I've seen him kiss her more times today than I've ever seen you and mom kiss in the whole like 13 years I've been alive. So when they broke up, I went to my son and I said, Hey, remember, um, you know, Ed and Ethel? He goes, yeah. Remember how they were kissing and hugging and Thanksgiving? And you said they kissed and hugged, you know, more than you'd ever seen mom and I. He goes, yeah. Look at him now. You know what's funny, Garrett? I swear on everything I hold holy that I did that. I okay. You. I did do it. Taught him a lesson. And you know what? He, they smile a little bit and they laugh. I think they get it. It's like my son who said, I gotta quit seeing her. I gotta quit seeing her. I go, why? She never calls me. She never texts me. She never has, asks how I am. I could be gone for a month. I come home. We have dinner. We watch TV and we have sex. I can't take it anymore. I had to bite my, I had to bite my thumb. Oh, oh, you idiot. You know, he wants, you know, how are you doing? How was your day? Oh, please. Uh, this comes from someone named Kevin. Oh, Jay, my name is Kevin. I'm from St. Louis. Stop calling me white. I consider that a racist. I am a real black person. And I happen to have a very white voice. It may fly with my phone job interviews. Sometimes I get pulled over by the cops. And because of my voice, I'm always let go. Cut the malarkey, nigga, he says to me. <laughs> I love listening, especially to public radio. When you do hear a guy, and you do know the guy is probably an African-American, but he's got that little bit of street just in the back. In a little while, we'll be talking about things in families and things that happens between grandmothers, grandfathers, aunties. And you go, what? what the fuck was that? <laughs> what was what was that? <laughs> Coming up on Black Perspective. Yeah. Um, I'd love to turn on TV and a real live black person speaks to me from the television instead of some poor man or woman who is being forced to try and sound like the complete fucking bores that are television announcers. Complete white bores. I'd like to look at TV one time, and the announcer looks into the screen, a, 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 a man that can take care of himself and goes like this. Hey, Houston, where you at? Like that. What's up? And then do the news, Garrett. <laughs> Today, 
the fucking Libyans <laughs> killed on back. You know what I mean? I mean, fucking do it, you know? <laughs> Instead of going, good evening, I'm Reginald Von Reginald. Well, today, trouble in Libya. It, you know, it's an insult. What's, what's sad is, is that in broadcasting, and it happened to me too, it even happens to Garrett with them, they, 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 the, the, uh, gold standard are people that you wouldn't want to be in real life. These horrifyingly square individuals. It's why people like Christina have trouble. Just, just dark hair and the last name is Palumbo. They're going to hire one of those fucking idiots with a red dress and, and white cleavage on Fox before they're going to hire her. Same thing with CNN. Except every now and again, they throw a fat one in there. From Dominique. Hey, Jay, did you read the FBI thwarted a bomb plot? Yes, I read that. They built the bomb for the guy. They built it. They showed him how to make the bomb. Garrett, I'm not kidding. They made the bomb. He was completely insane, right? They said, how would you like to blow something up? He goes, I want to blow something up very, 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 very big. They said, how about the, you know, uh, the uh, Federal Reserve in New York? Yes. Okay, we'll show you how to do it. I swear to God. And they sold him the fake dynamite and everything else, and they arrested him when he pushed the, you know, the handle down, and, and a thing came out and said, bang. Okay? Yeah. That's the only bombers they catch. The ones that they fucking manufacture. That promo is becoming more and more true, isn't it, Garrett? Almost anybody could do this. <laughs> you know, come on. You want to all put microphones in your trucks and just start fucking broadcasting. Do they actually have any of uh, a, a web uh, those web webcast um, podcasts that are from a moving vehicle? Can you have that? That would be cool. You're talking, but it looks out your front window while you're driving. I would do that. Yeah, you do the show while you're uh, driving your truck. Yeah, yeah and people could hop along with you. Yeah. Yeah, you have the headset, and you go, hi, it's 12 o'clock, it's me, Rocky the truck driver. And you're driving, you know, you're talking and driving, and you honk the horn. You're the CB. You, you talk politics, you have a whole thing, and then in the thing, you have your buddies call you on a speaker, probably. Or no, they could, yeah. couldn't could they call on the telephone on a, on a podcast? Sure, they could do yeah. it all, right? Yeah. And and you're the, you're the trucker, but that would actually, you know what, how about this? I do it. I pretend I'm Rocky the Trucker, and we put the sound effect of a truck behind me. And I say, oh, I'm over on I-4527, going into Cleveland. Like that, you know. Well, no video then? No, I wouldn't have a video. Yeah. Mm -mm. I don't find that interesting. I mean, when I, when I look at somebody broadcasting and, and the, the picture's kind of jumping, I'm not sure why I need to see them physically. You know, I listen to the radio station in New Orleans for the blind, and these people read. And it's like you reading, except it goes on for hours. It Austin, Texas. <clears throat> Governor Rick Perry on Wednesday lend, lend, lent his support to a group in East Texas of cheerleaders lent his support to a group of East Texas cheerleaders as they fight in court to keep using banners with Bible verses at a public football, at a school football game. Oh, my God. It's fabulous. It is fabulous. Do they have to do it live? Can't they just record Apparently, it? they do. They do. They do it live. I, look, if it's recorded... More power to them. Because <laughs> then you listen back and go, whoop, 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 whoop. the, oh, it sounds great, Bill. Sounds great. Let's put it on. Let's go to Garen James, uh, G-A-R-R-E-N. Uh, that's an unusual name. Is that a given name or is that a showbiz kind of a name? That, how you doing, Jay? Uh, can you hear me okay? I'm doing, you know, obviously I'm doing well. I'm speaking. My voice sounds strong. So <laughs> I'm doing fine. I, I mean, perfect. for. 
Well, I'm perfect. That's right. But if I were to say to you, even though I sound good, I'm dying of some horrible tumor, that would ruin the interview. So let's just try and stay with you, okay? Let's not worry about me. Garen, where'd you get that name before we go to your, your exciting adventures as a gigolo? Well, that, that is a stage name, um, and it was given to me by my ex, my ex girlfriend who, who owned and operated a, uh, escort agency for, for men, females for men. Mm -hmm. And uh, now, she had her stage name, and so uh, the birth of my stage name occurred. Now, this gigolo thing, uh, Garrett was saying that he would have trouble with it because he would have, I mean, he might be able to go out with the person and make the money, but when it now it comes down to the having of sex, you're not going to be with, like women aren't with men that really turn them on, and but, you know, you have to kind of go through with it. How do you... How do you steal your resolve to make love to someone who is physically unattractive to you? You know, they, they take their clothes off and they, they look like a, you know, a saddlebag full of quarters and you've got to grease that thing up and get in there and satisfy them. Uh, well, you know, um, you're, you're kind of like touching on a, on a, a very touchy subject because, you know, we, we don't sell sex. So, um, at least my agency doesn't sell sex, but if you're asking in general, how would you be able to have yes. sex with somebody that's yeah, you know what? Hey, Garen, Garen, hey, Garen, wink, wink, I got yeah. you. <laughs> hey, Garrett, hey, <laughs> Garrett, just in general, you know, they just sell wink. companionship, Jay. I understand that, but you, <laughs> wink, wink, I get it. You uh, yeah, your eye? so something, uh, yeah, hey, you know, Garen. Yeah, um, how about this one? I'm gonna, I'm gonna deflect it. What do you think those, something you would never be, what do you think those female prostitutes are thinking when they have to try and sleep with a man who is of not, you know, uh, 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 sexually pleasant for them to look at? Um, well, for women, I think it's pretty easy, you know, I, uh, I, I imagine, you know, um, uh, you know they got a bottle of lube on the on the uh, on the dresser. <laughs> so so you would just say that 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 perhaps my favorite bio oil will make anybody feel at least pleasant, and you use a lot of shading, you know, and a lot of uh, low lights. Now cowboysforangels.com, yeah. com, and then the, um, now Garrett is a fan of gigolos. Uh, Garrett, what, what questions do you want to ask uh, Garen about the TV show? And you complimented it earlier that you thought it might be actually a really a real reality show. Well, right, the, the women that they use, it's not like um, you know the typical soft porn you see on uh, pay cap pay cable channels. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So it just gives a level of reality to it. I'm not sure that I believe that it's completely real women, just because how many women order these things and then would agree to be filmed while it's happening mm -hmm. with their face and everything. But I do enjoy the well, show. It's you know, I, yeah, I, I mean, I serve as creative consultant for the show for the past three seasons, and, and part of my duty as creative consultant is to give them real clients. So... Um, you know, these are all women that have previously used the website before. Um, and then what I do is I put out a, a mass email to any previous client, would you like to do another date on camera? And oh, that makes uh, sense. So, so they're so these, they're familiar yeah, with the process and everything. I get, that makes sense. Yeah. So, I mean, some are, some are new that have just, like, you know, written to us and saying, hey, if, you, if you're doing another season, I would love to be on camera. You know, it's, it's exciting for people to do that. Um, and, and, you know, you would be surprised about the, the type of women that use the service. I mean, event, you know, every once in a while, of course, you get a guy that says, hey, if she calls again, I'm not available. <laughs> um, but, <laughs> you know, that happens. But, uh, I mean, I'd say at least 50, 60 percent of the appointments, these guys call me. Don't you lie to me. I can hear Randy's voice in the background. I know he's there. I know he's there. <laughs> Randy, Randy, get on the phone. Does that ever happen? They yell you know, for the guy. No. Yeah, yeah. I and you know, um, I'll I'll just you know let him know. Okay, he's not available. Why don't you try somebody new? And then I'll throw somebody else in the mix and not, you know, of course not give them the heads up that hey, 
have, you, you, you might be going into some landmines on this one. But Have you ever gotten um, a call from a client that you would consider out of your league where, like, you would be the shortest straw in the relationship kind of thing? <laughs> you mean a woman that was better well, looking than yeah. the normal gigolo woman? You know, like well, a 10 or thing. something, you know. Yeah. A 10 would here's never call you up, Garrett. Maybe well, that's why I'm asking. Maybe they have. No, that's, You know what, Garrett? No, you don't, listen, excuse me a second, Garrett. You don't have to yell at me. You've had one, you, one fucking idea, and I'm listening to it, and I'm being very polite, and you yell at me like I'm going to ruin your no, idea. You dismissed my question without him. I didn't dismiss it. It may not be true because a 10 can walk into a bar and go, who'd like to fuck me, and guys will come up to them. They might not need a goddamn gigolo. Hmm. Garen? Garen, I'm sorry you had to hear well, that. Yeah. Jay, no, you know, listen, Jay. I by know the way, Garen, the show's not doing that great. Uh, when you asked in the beginning, I didn't want to go into the whole thing. But now the cat's out of the bag. And we may not even be doing this thing past this afternoon. You may be our last what guest. What show's not doing good? This one right here, not doing well. Really? That outburst, that's part of the tension we're having. <laughs> yeah. Well, listen. Yeah. You know, to answer your question about... Hot client. He's like a guy in QVC. Keep going. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You would be su you would be surprised. A lot of working girls use our service. Thank you. So we have it's... girls that are that are getting thousands of dollars per hour to use our service because they're used to mm -hmm. they're in that business of getting paid for. So, I mean, we have some of the top escorts in the nation using our service. We also have some uh, celebrities that use our service. I mean, we have women that are very beautiful um and it's not it's because it's not necessarily about it's not about sex mm -hmm. you know any woman whether they're big you know whether they're 200 pounds can walk into a bar and say i want to have sex and they'll have a line of guys i mean guys are just pigs you know so that's true uh, especially you know, especially on the west bank of new orleans it's amazing uh yeah. there are bars over there there are women that are over 250 and there are guys around them i'm not kidding you like like uh like Roaches around one of those roach motels. There are there are places in the United States where big gals do really well. I you know what? Let me apologize. Now, Garen, no, but you would be surprised. I'm not surprised, but I don't think there's a lot of them, and so I don't even know how you make that much money because you know guys want to you know go online and and free shit and porno and hookers and everything else. But women, and let's bring uh, Christina in here, please. Christina is a uh, a, a, a vibrant young former overweight woman uh, who works with us now, Hi. Uh, but so, okay. on some level people find her attraction. Well, she was, uh, and you know, even though you lose a lot of weight, Garen, you still have that fatty in you. You know what I'm saying? And you never recover from that fatty thing. Mostly because uh, there are people that are there to constantly remind mm -hmm. you. Now, if you weren't with someone significant, would you ever go to cowboysforangels.com to find a male escort? I'm reading right from the website. Warmth, appearance, intelligence, humor, and charm. I want to say yes for uh, to be polite, but I don't think that it's up my alley in real life. I told Cowboys you, Darren, this, this show is in such trouble, angels. and I can't get the people that I work with to kind of like go where we should go. Do you know what I'm saying? The man, um, the, the and man let me apologize. So this is not the way my sure, interviews go. Was... I know we're trying to promote you. The next thing you're going to say is, is describing a man like that, uh, polite, charming, emotionally mature. Sounds like every gay guy I know, Aaron. That's the problem. The... doesn't sound like most masculine, you know, heterosexual, you know, sports I mean, bar you... guys. Can I explain you, um, myself? If... If you take a look, I mean, I could email you now my web statistics for, for last month. For se the month of September, I had 85,225 unique website visits to the website. Wow. What about guys going on there um, trying to look at the, the beefcake? I'm just too intimidated. They're so... Um, that's possible. Now, wait. Play now, wait. Girl. Christina, Christina, I want you now, you're you're almost talking to yourself and babbling, but apparently she's saying, uh, Garen, and, and now I don't know if this is true or not because she's a pathological liar. Um, she's saying she may be too intimidated by the handsomeness. Would you have a chubby kind of an Italian guy that would take a person yeah, like I'm Christina very average, out? Yeah, so. Yeah, would you have an average-looking guy uh, take her out, a guy that maybe could lose a few pounds? 
Well, you know what, Jay? I mean, you're, tell, you're telling me you're losing your radio show. Maybe I could put you up on the site and we could see what happens. <laughs> you know what I've always thought, and I said this earlier, I am I am a good date. I mean, I've always been a lot of fun. But, you know, I'm older. You know, I have a little bit of a paunch to me and all, but I like to dance. I like to have great meals. I like to talk. And if someone is going to pay me 300 bucks an hour, I mean, maybe I could, I couldn't get that kind of money. What could an older guy who's a good time, what kind of money could I get? And, and also, you know, I have some modicum of celebrity. So, you know, I'd be a good time. What, what do you think so, I get an hour? Well, what we could probably do is, is we could set it up to where the date would be with you on the radio. So it's like you always, what I, I would always try to no. do is give them that appeal that they're going to get something extra out of the deal no. to make it more no. worthwhile. You can't date on the radio. I mean, I, I'm not going to be charming on the radio. I'm going to be a prick, and they're going to be a guest. I mean, a I go to an elegant dinner and, you know, and, and everything else. And I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to be honest with you now. If she gives me an opening, if she gives me an opening, I'm going to grease her up and slam her. <laughs> well, I'm looking at you. I'm looking at your staff now, Rodney. I'm telling you right now, I'm going to, I'm going to agree. Oh, Rodney's not going with us. He's not going. Rodney, you don't want him. Rodney, you don't want him. I couldn't get much money for him. Uh, <laughs> uh, now, now, look, do you have a picture of Christina? Uh, Christina, send him a picture. Let him take a look at you. He, well, if he's on there, he he's not up there. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'm on, that. Gianna. I'm on the site. Gianna, she works on Friday mornings, oh, and she's she's just desperate yeah, to meet people. Yeah. yeah. And Christina, um, or maybe she can. So so now, but this is for for uh, for guys. Is there a picture of Garrett? Uh, what kind of money can we get for Garrett? And he's lost weight. You're better looking than oh. the current picture, right? right. Oh, oh God, did you hear that moan? Wow, I don't know what's <laughs> going uh, on with that reaction. What's the matter with you, Garrett? Garrett? Well, Garrett. Uh... <laughs> You know, I, I'm looking at the the goatee. I mean, maybe if we shaved you. He up, doesn't have that. Uh, I did shave that. That's gone. That's gone. That's gone. That's plus gone. like 30 pounds of him have, are gone. Mm -hmm. You have a reputation right. of right. turning away like 95 percent of the applicants. Yeah. And and here's yeah. the deal: is it okay whether the guys are straight or gay? Because you're not selling sex. So do, do women mind going with a man who is not interested in them, would never be interested in them physically, but they're going to have a wonderful, warm, and fun evening with, with, with that person? Well, that's the difference. That's what I tried to start when I created this website from the beginning was there were so many uh, bisexual men or gay men that would see women. And, and my agency is unique in that we are the only – straight men only. So, you know, I just figured that if a woman wanted to hire a guy, they wouldn't want to think in the back of their mind that this man was out with another man the night before. So, you know, I I, I have a lot of men that, that apply that are on gay websites or this or that, and I, I, I don't hire them. So all my men are, are strictly for women only. They're straight men 100%. Now you have um I'm looking at you, you have some sort of a contest on your website now we can't uh, run the contest for you but I'm uh, you still have that going on Yeah yeah no we're we're giving away a thank you to all of our supporters over the years we're giving away a free date with one of the gigolos on the uh on the gigolo show the show And the show. names are Vin Armani is one of them Nick Hawk mm -hmm. Brace or Ash Armand <clears throat> You've got <laughs> yeah. These are the names of the of the gigolos. <laughs> That's I name them. You don't like their names? Don't well... make fun of the names. I name them. <laughs> so go to Cowboys with the number four Angels dot com. And now we have a lot of men listening. Um, you know, probably seventy five percent of the audience is 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 men. You know, big uh, truck driver types. So, you know, people that dig gold mines and and you know. Sell electrical equipment and stuff like that. Well, what, what if they go there? Is there anything for them? Uh, well, they could enter for maybe you know, oh. enter the contest for their girlfriend. Sure, and then as let let Nick friend. Hawk maybe take their girlfriend out and and steal her away. Yeah, yeah, like a, you know. Yeah, uh, yeah I uh, do that in a minute. How about this? How about this? A guy wants to go to Vegas. He's going to gamble. So. He wins the contest. He goes with his girlfriend or wife. 
Um, he has fun. He gambles. He goes to the strip clubs, and his wife is taken care of by uh, by Nick Hawk for the night. I love that idea. Uh, Christina, would you like your boyfriend to gamble and have a big night and go to strip clubs and Nick Hawk takes care of you all over Vegas for the night? Yes. You sure. and Nick. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No, I'm, I'm not. No. Would you do that? Would you have a platonic evening with Nick Hawk while your boyfriend He'd went off? He'd be like my have... babysitter. No, you'd have a great time. Well, you'd you go never to know. shows. You'd... What do you mean you, you never, never know? know? Something could happen. Something could happen. No, even if it didn't happen, does that sound like a good time to you, Christina? Yeah, sure. A free ride. Yeah, but Absolutely. you'd want your boyfriend to do it with you. Is that what you're Of course. That, oh. Yeah, you see, men are different than women. They're, no, like Garrett, if you went to Vegas and your girlfriend went off and had a big time and there was an escort service and an escort took you around town, would you do that if it was okay with your girlfriend, Garrett? Oh, yeah. Hold on. Your yeah. girlfriend has the escort? No, your girlfriend goes and has a good time. And a female escort, Occupies no sex, you takes you around for three thing. hours. Would you do that? Would that sound like a good time? Garrett. I'm thinking about I can't it. Believe that what do you, you mean you're thinking think about, about it? it? You're gonna go to dinner. Yes, you're yeah. gonna you're gonna what what are you what are you try is your girlfriend listening or something? What's the matter with you? You'd go to dinner, you'd have a nice evening, you'd go to a show, she'd be very attractive, she'd be attentive. Yeah. It even says that his escorts are protective. So Christine, if anybody gives you any shit, this guy will beat the crap out of them. Like. Maybe they're even carrying a box cutter for all I know. But Yes, if my wife was off, you know what? What? What's happening here? I don't. I have. Yes. I, Jay, I have to tell you this. You never know. There could be a romantic spark, and something could happen between the two. See, and that's not illegal. Yeah, you never know. Well, I don't think you're going to say that with your law. girlfriend. Nobody. Your, let me hear the law. Nobody really understands the law. Do you want me to kind of break it down for you? Yeah, I can't pay for sex, but if I give you a $1,000 and you happen to fuck me, that's okay? Well, I'm reading that right out of the Nevada the Nevada state law. That's what it says, just like that. Those That's let me, verbatim. Let me, let me break it down for you. Sure. Let's say, Christina, you're, you're at home, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you, you order a pizza. Oh, speaking my language. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. You order a pizza. Let's say you order a large pepperoni pizza, right? Okay. Mm-hmm. The guy who shows up delivering the pizza, this large pepperoni pizza, shows up, and he's so hot, and you guys look at each other, and you guys get down, okay? Now, you hired that guy to order your pizza, mm-hmm. I mean, to deliver your pizza. You understand? Mm-hmm. So he was hired and under contract to order pizza to deliver a pizza. Now, he shows up. You two look at each other. There's the spark, and you guys have sex. That's not illegal. Yeah, but you know what? A pizza I'm is sure actually a the thing. in policy, there's something about don't fraternize with the customers. No, you know what? You're, that's, you're really walking a tightrope there because if you're paying somebody 300 bucks an hour and then you fuck them, if somebody ever took you to court, that would be a tough one to try and beat. To try and say, well, you know, like the pizza. You know, the pizza's ten bucks. It's, it's, you know, it's all in the contract. It's all in the, all right. how you how you um, contract okay. somebody. Now, if, if this pizza guy showed up and Christina said, "Hey, this guy, you know, you're hot. While you're delivering this pizza, I'll give you an extra hundred dollars to to sleep with me." That's illegal. That's illegal. Or if he shows up, yeah, if he shows up and he says, "Hey, Christina," and he says to her. Hey, you think I'm hot? It'll be a hundred dollars to have sex with me. You know, extra above and beyond my pizza delivery fee. That's illegal as well. Those are the two illegal things. Because that's like so. So later on, it has to be you have sex. Christina gives him three hundred just for funsies. No, no, no. I'm not. I'm just saying if there's a romantic spark. Right. Something does happen. Like there's no the intentions, people. but not it, illegal. something not should right. happen. Right. Mm-hmm. I'm just telling you now that for 300 bucks an hour, I don't care what she looks like, I'm greasing her up and slamming her. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> I'm thinking of opening greaserupandslammer.com and putting my picture there yeah. with my shirt off, Garrett, just so they know what they're getting. Well, and my stomach over, you want to hear something? My stomach over my belt. How about that one? Mm. 
and I won't even do push-ups before I take the picture, so that I'll have the kind of droop. Do any girls request the boyfriend experience, where you sit around and play video games and they clean up or something? What? Uh, I don't. You know, we've had some very strange requests uh, over the years, but I mean, you'd be surprised. At, at, you know, we, we're kind of joking around, but. You know, I've gotten so many emails and text messages from clients just saying, like, I really needed this. I've been through a horrible divorce. Um, I was a victim of rape. Um, I was uh, in a bad injury, and I haven't been on a date in, in three years. And, you know, I just really want to thank you from the bottom of my heart. That this really just, you know, just made my, my weekend so special, and, and, like, I feel alive again. So, you know... You can sit I would need, I would need 300 an hour. Like I would need 300 an hour to sit through somebody talking about all that shit. Yeah. <laughs> and I'd be very well, you attentive. Know, it, it, yeah. You know, we really are just, just providing like real quality entertainment for people. I mean, the, in the entertainment business, that's, that's just what we're in. You know, we're in the entertainment business and people spend billions of dollars in the entertainment industry. You know, whether you so, go to a movie or a concert or, or what you do. Well, I mean, I'm going gonna, gonna to read the rates. I'm going to read the – unfortunately, there is a social stigma that male companions are providing a sexual service. Uh, the most important aspects of providing quality companionships that are often ignored. Rates, one hour, $300. Two-hour appointment, 550 Four-hour appointment, 1000 Overnight, 2000 Per day, 3000 Weekend trip, five thousand. Weekly rate, fifteen thousand dollars. Has anyone ever done a weekly thing where they took the guy off and he hung around for a whole week? Yeah, I had just sent Nick Hawk uh, last month for two weeks in uh, in Europe. Went to Morocco, London. Um, where else did they go? Uh, Morocco, Morocco, London, and then to New York for for the last few days. 30 grand and then she had to pay for everything over the top of that, right? That's correct. Wow. Now, do you think Well, you know when you think about well, do you do you think they had a romantic spark? I mean, certainly it was just for companionship and protection. Do you think they had a romantic spark Did they did they come back looking, you know, kind of happy with each other? Oh yes, she she's already set up another appointment for uh, uh, February for another week week trip. So, Garrett, you need to buy that ninety minute. What's the ninety X thing? The workout system. P ninety X. You need to do P ninety X. Why? Get in really because you could make a lot of money. You're a much deeper individual. I would actually be your manager. Not I would all manage girls it. like the muscly guy, though. I'm, I'm not muscly. To tell you you need to I be don't. in better shape. You need to be in better shape. Um, we get him a tuxedo. Garrett, I'm telling you, uh, you, you're a, you know, you're a personable guy, and you know, uh, I would join up with this company if I were you. But that's that's you and not me. How many uh, uh, cow, cowboysforangels.com? Yes, go ahead, Garrett. Go ahead. How many quote unquote successful dates can you do in one night? Uh, I generally only book one man one uh one man per day per day. I don't I don't like to oh, do double right. double time. So, you know, it's two hour or four hour or overnight you know, per okay. night. All right. Well Garen, thanks. And then uh Gigolos is back on uh for how many seasons has it been going? Uh we're in season three, episode eight airs this Thursday at eleven PM Eastern mm -hmm. time. Um, Cowboysforangels.com, so. the straight male escort company. Now, have you ever been tricked? Has a has a person called up, sounded like a woman, and then they got on the date, and when the date was over, a guy rips off his. He looks like Joy Behar, and and he rips his clothes off, and it's it's a man, and he attacks the escort. Has that ever happened? Uh, not yet, but please don't right. give anybody that idea. <laughs> well, I, I just, I just thought of it because if I, if I dress like a woman, I would look just like Joy Behar. All right. Well, look, no, Garen, we thank you. All you the know. Time from, okay. All right, Garen, uh, thank you, Garen. Have you said everything you need to say? Have you, uh, you think you've been properly serviced by the Jay Thomas Show? Yeah, yeah. You guys were great. Thank you so much. <laughs> thank you, Garen James.
All right. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. You know, why, why, did he, why did he sound like he wasn't happy at the end? I think there was just some delay issue. It was kind of hard to... Yeah, that was it. It was a delay straight. issue. What? A delay issue? No, he sounded unhappy. He was on the air 30 minutes selling, you know, his gentleman yeah. escort. Maybe because he wasn't getting a blowjob for that 30 minutes. I'd be sad, too. That was him. <laughs> now, is he kidding or what? I mean, five grand, you know, 300 yeah. an hour is pretty steep. Uh, Tape the show tonight or something and watch it. I mean... Mm-hmm. It, so to they me, just show them they, look real. They go out to dinner and they go dancing and they're kind of frumpy women. And the, do the guys look straight to you? No. Yeah. Well, metrosexually straight. All right. All right. Yeah. But I don't know. They yeah. usually don't show the date and stuff that much. There's more just a lot of what times. Show? It's, it's just the guy shows up at the girl's house. I wonder if, you know how um, Dennis Hoff has his place and the women on his site are, uh, I'm not sure if, you know. Fives? Yeah, but are they are they the ones that are actually at the ranch? Like, are these guys the ones that would yes. actually go on a date with me, or are they just models? Yeah, uh, Ash Armand. It says on their website that these Vin pictures Armand. are uh, very current and very real. Like I would never the, go out with a man that looks like this, though. I would feel so intimidated the whole night. That's what I'm See, saying. Here's, here, here's what's odd to me. Look at the six pack. Ugh. So I the guy comes on. He's, he's got this escort service, and the show gigolos. You know, I guess pay some money or whatever. But it just sounds like a very strange way to make a living. It's like, and at the end, I think he was, you know, getting serious all of a sudden, and he's. Performing a service and all this other bullshit. It's like, what? What are you talking about? This is a ridiculous, you know, not not a whole lot of women, in my estimation, call up escort services. I think many more men do it. Maybe I'm wrong, but I don't. I've never even seen an ad for a woman's escort service in the back of, you know, a magazine or on the internet. Nothing. You would think if they did there would be these women that have such low self-esteem and are so ugly or overweight that they can't pull anyone. So that's their last resort. Like the women on this show, like, why don't they just go out to a bar in Vegas and pick up some rich guy? Well, that's casting. They they cast them. That's why. They they cast them. Yeah. That, that, that's a casting thing. I don't know. But, I mean... Then he just said the guy went for two weeks to Morocco for fifteen thousand dollars. Thirty grand for two weeks. What is that? I mean, I you know, in the movies it would be some kind of, you know, beat up looking old drunk woman or a rich woman, right? And she'd have some young stud with her for the for the trip. I mean, I guess that I guess if you're that rich, but why wouldn't he laugh at his own little silly thing that he's doing hmm. anyway um i'll watch it but you watch it and you enjoy it i want you know what i, I want a date with vin armani it's a good like uh it's like a good uh foreplay to masturbation <laughs> you're not masturbating to the gigolos are you no you know but- no you know, there's sex in it and stuff, so it kind of it's sort of hot. And no, then, wait a minute. How can there be sex in it? He just read this thing where you know it's it's against the law to give somebody three hundred bucks and. Well, they, that's all the whole show is about. It's like a scene of the four guys hanging out in some casino. Mm-hmm. They talk, and then they're like, "Oh, I got a date to go to." And they show up to the girl's house, and the girl gets naked and has sex with them. All different positions, and different outfits, or different fetishes. They'll be tied up sometimes. Well, how come that isn't prostitution? I guess they're just paying for companionship, and they happen to hit it off. Well, that's what this guy was saying. Yeah. You realize that every hooker in every town could say, all right, all right, put your hands up. You're a prostitute. I'm not a prostitute. He and I, he was paying me $100 to talk. Yeah. And... And we hit it off all of a sudden. 
and I began to, you know, to jerk him off with these, you know, rubber, you know, a cafeteria lady gloves <laughs> it, into this napkin. That's how excited we got for each other. Uh, Greg of Texas. How are you, Greg? Hey, um, how you doing? Good. Yes, sir. Hey, hey, I want to talk about, about the interview. I don't think you were very fair to him in the interview that you just gave. Really? Really. I mean, well, you, you didn't let the guy complete any – I mean, you cut every sentence off. You didn't let him complete, you know, a, a complete sentence at all. You're just – you're degrading him and, you know, downplaying the whole thing. It's like you're trying to make a joke out of all of it. Right, I was, yeah. Yeah, and I, I kind of thought he – but you mean, you mean you take that seriously also? You really believe that – that somebody's paying thirty grand to go two weeks to Morocco and all of that stuff. You you oh, believe I, all I, that? I'm, absolutely. I mean, that, that's the way he makes his living. You know, that's that's the way he uh, he gets paid. So sure, I, I would take it seriously. That was my job. Huh. Well, I was kind of looking at it like, you know, he's on the TV show, and I don't know. I'm I'm stunned. I'm really <laughs> stunned. I was I was shocked. I I was shocked that he was. You know, saying that they're protective and reading me the laws, and you know, I, I think if I was a rookie cop in Vegas, you know, I could figure yeah. that one out. Yeah, there, there's, there's definitely. Uh, it sounds kind of shady, but you know, that's. I, I, I would just like to ha I hear some more of the conversation without you cutting them off all the time. That's well, you better go to that website. You better go to I will, Cowboys. I will do that because it's Thank all you. there. It, no, it's all there. It's all there. <laughs> You Thank can you compete in the upcoming sweepstakes. All right. Thank you, Greg of Texas. Thanks, uh, let's go to Chris, who's also in Texas. Hey. Yes, yes, Chris, go ahead. Hey, uh, yeah, I uh, I just started listening to your show the other night, but uh, I was just going to say that there was a movie about, uh, I would say, 5, 10, maybe 15 years ago, uh, of a, a male escort service or whatever. Uh, and the girl, or the lady, she was a corporate businesswoman. She never had any time for dating, and she got an escort to go back with her to to see her family for like Christmas dinner or something like that. Mm -hmm. And then in the end, they end up falling in love or whatever. But uh, yeah, well, wasn't there American Gigolo? Was that Richard Gere who was in American Gigolo? Well, that was that was. Yeah, that was big gigolo. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, so so you think maybe uh, these women hire these guys and the, and they go go places with them and the guy pretends he likes them, so all of the their friends think they've got this guy. Right. I mean, you know, mm -hmm. if if uh, hmm. that's yeah, basically she works she works all the time, so she needs. She doesn't have time for a boyfriend, so she hires a gigolo and and uh, takes him back and says, "Oh, this is my boyfriend." They get a whole cover story going, and uh, just so the family won't harass her about getting married or whatever. Well, listen, um, that's a hell of a business right there. That's unreal. You know, men, you know, they wouldn't take anybody back home with them. You know, that first three hundred bucks, Garrett, that'd be done on the way to the airport. The first three hundred in the back seat of the limo. <laughs> That'd be it, you know. Hey, I feel I feel a romantic spark. Let's do this before I fly off and save myself five grand. <laughs> so, all right. Thank you very much, Chris. By the way, we're only taking people from Texas. Uh, Danny of Texas. Yes, it's a huge state. A lot of callers. Uh, yes, Danny of Texas. Go ahead. Yes. Hey, Jay. How are you this afternoon? I'm fine. Thank you. I don't, I don't really care. No, I do. But, uh, no, Jay, I, I take him very seriously. I, I'm in the business, and uh -huh. I get paid by the inch. <laughs> All right. Get rid of him, please. Hi, uh, him. Shut up. Uh, Ryan, who is in Quebec, we're now going to uh, Canada, Garrett. That rule ended quickly. Yep, we got, we got that right. <laughs> uh, Canada only for the next 60 <laughs> seconds. Canada, give us a call. Uh, Ryan, go ahead. Yes, go ahead. Yeah, I don't, I don't agree there's no way that I would stand up in court that you turned up for companionship for three hundred dollars and ended up. In there's no way that that's gonna happen. No, that's not gonna. Oh, there's a follow, but I can't see this this going on. 
How about this How one? I gave him I gave him thirty grand. We spent two weeks together. Nothing, Your Honor. It was a, it was a spark. We had a spark uh, right outside of Morocco. Yeah, yeah. We were on the <laughs> Nile for two weeks. What I can't believe is that there are enough people that use his service to. To, to him for, for him to make a living. Women escort services make millions and millions of dollars. But I found it hard to believe. But there's, not enough, there's not enough desperate women with enough money to, do, to, to keep this guy. I don't know how he does And it, that's why he, I think that's why he got mad. Garrett, that's what it was. That's that's yeah. You got it. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Ryan, very much. I mean, th th that's what I was really getting to. And, and, you know, that's too honest of a question. You know, it's not like the guy could have told us the truth and it wouldn't have hurt his career. That's what's great about this show. You can come on here with a great idea or we can actually uncover, you know, the truth about something you're doing. And neither one of them will affect your um, your business. The show's not big enough to affect. And I'm not saying that even as a joke. It's true. No one's ever been hurt or helped. By Just this look show. at Groupon. Mm -hmm. Oh, I told that guy it was the dumbest thing I've ever heard. <laughs> He's a multi-billionaire. I said, so you're going to get groups of people with coupons, and they're going to bid on the coupons? Who's going to do that? Right. Well, Jay, I've already got $48 million from investors in Silicon. I mean, to me, that just sounded like the dumbest thing I've ever heard. I went on Groupon, and it was and to me it was totally difficult. I had to wait for the bids to come. You ever done it, Gary? You wait for the bids to come in and all that. Yeah, well, it's now, a lot easier in New York because mm -hmm. there's so many available. Right, right. Mm -hmm. I think when I was in Santa Barbara, you yeah. know what? Trying to find a really good Groupon for Oxnard, real, real <laughs> difficult. You know, for French Lick, Indiana, tough to find a good spot. You know except for, you know, Olive Garden, right? Um, but that guy is a multi-billionaire, and, and uh, he wasn't happy with the way the interview went either. Uh, let's go to Corn Cobb from Oklahoma. Uh, yes, Corn Cobb, go ahead. Wow, you really fucked that one up, you shit. Well, it looks Wait, like Corn Cobb the way it's... How you're doing. By the way, I don't like... give a fuck how you're you doing. You know what? Hey, look. Hey, you know what, guys? Look, look. I'm telling the truth. I'm not asking for a bit. So just start. We don't need to hear every person call up and, and say, I don't, why do you steal? You actually steal my bit from me. I do my thing. I say my thing. And then every one of you goes, Hey, it is the easiest show to get on. Hey, I don't care if you feel good. Don't repeat my material to me. I've already said it. Okay. Okay. What is your wife's just, taste like? <laughs> Well, huh? I'm going to tell you, hold, you know what, Garrett? Hold on a second. The guy stopped me cold. Just, <laughs> he stopped how, me how cold. Big, how big How big? Oh, a dick God. does your son have? Is it bigger uh, than night, yours? Night. Now, why are you so angry Go all of a sudden? Wife. Go back to the wife. It's fabulous. What does it taste like? Is it strawberry, banana, kiwi, what? It's something you've never tasted because you're angry at something that has nothing to do with me. What are you so yeah, angry I, about? I hate little fucking short little dick guys that are sit on the plane that think they're better than everybody else. Hold on a minute. I think they're, they're wearing okay, all right. Hold corn cob. Shoes. Corn cob. Hold on. Corn cob. You don't even have enough respect to say my name because you're dumb and you can't even say my name. What is it? Hold on a second. I know you're angry and and it's okay with me, but here's the sad thing. I will always be able to buy and sell you. I will always be better than you, and there's nothing you or I can do about it. So you can be angry at See, me that's for it. wrong, because I'm in the same boat you are. I don't work for a living. Not my money. Really? I can do anything I want at any given mm -hmm. time. Okay, fine. I, I don't work. I'm, I'm the one percent. Can, can you get a radio show? Uh, I don't want one. So, so when, when, when we hang up and you really sit and think about what you accomplished here, are you going to yeah. feel like you were successful? In, I mean, have, have, I, have I allowed you to successfully vent? And do you feel better that you think you called someone who thinks he's better than you and taught him a lesson? Do you feel better? 
Uh, no, what you have accomplished is given me a break from raising my two little girls, and I've got a 15-minute window before I take the oldest one to jiu-jitsu. And I had nothing. Is that it? No, is that because? Is that because your wife left you because you're an asshole? Um, yes, but I'm the asshole that's going to punch you in the nose the next time I see you on a plane, and there's nothing that's you can a, be able to do right. about it. You're not going to see me on the plane because with your two little girls and and the shithole whatever bullshit job you say you have, you're not going to be on a plane a anytime job. soon. I don't have a job. And, and by the way, if you went to punch me in the nose. Well, I you would do. open your. I carry a box cutter with me at all times. Oh wow! I would open I your gut up. I have this blade. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I you got, see uh, me, I got a you? master's in Krav Maga. Uh, I would. I would open you up like a fucking. <laughs> you would be nothing but tuna fish. <laughs> Look, I'm sorry that. Listen, you know what? I'm sorry that you're upset, and I just want to make sure that you feel better. Well, because that's what I'm here for. Do you feel better? Anymore. Because you want to hear something? You don't sound okay. You don't really. You really don't sound okay. I am a very, very angry person, Jay. Yeah, yeah. And you need to like. You know what? Call Cavino and Rich, would you? <laughs> because <laughs> I'd like to hear that. I'd like you know what, Garrett? I'd like to hear them handle this one. Okay. I'd like you to ask them how their new wait a minute how their new wives' pussies taste. <laughs> Would you please do that? And how how what's the what's the producer's name? How Spot's wife's asshole tastes. Please do that tomorrow. Hold it. Give me a gift tomorrow, and call them and ask each one of them how their wives' pussies taste and how how Spot's wife's asshole tastes. Thank you very much. What wife are you on, three or four? Three, three. And, and I, you can say anything you want because I I almost don't even remember their names on a daily basis. Okay. You can say How anything you want. It's going for you. It's all going good. But please do that for me tomorrow, would you? And because I'm going to be listening. Do it in the last 15 minutes of their show because that's when I really, you know, honed in on it. All right. Thank you, well, Corn good. Cup. See thank you, Brock. You. Thank Brock. His name is Brock. That's what it was. His name is. He just spells Brock backwards, and he thinks he's cool. I thought it was Corn Cob. <laughs> K Corb. What an idiot! So he's going to punch me in an airplane. I'm going to stab him with a box cutter. I got to tell you, I'm going to be at a Southwest flight <laughs> at nine in the morning on Monday from Cleveland. For God's sakes, I hope you show up. What a night of entertainment that's going to be. Let's go to George, who's in uh, Kansas. Uh, yes, George, hello. How are you? Well, let me apologize for that. I, a lot of rude things were said just now. I could have cut the guy off, but I have this sadistic kind of, wouldn't you say that, uh, Christina? I get a little sadistic. I actually enjoy that, don't I? Maybe too much. Maybe too yeah, much. Yeah, but I mean, he's a fucking douchebag anyway. Well, he was a strange fellow. Oklahoma is. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. Yes, go ahead, uh, George. What can we do for you? I, I was just I was hoping I would get on with Corn Cobb so we could exchange words and I could find out what town he lived in. <laughs> so wait a minute now. If Corn Cobb comes to get me, would you be there for me, George? Well, I live in Kansas, so I mean, yeah. if you're here in Kansas, you know, yeah, yeah. I will. Well, we could meet. Uh, you'd pick a town, and then I would fly into it, and you, me, and Corn Cobb would just meet up somewhere. Would you kill him for me if he started to really attack me? Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute, wait a minute Garrett. I'm going to hire George as my escort for 100 bucks an hour, and if he kills somebody while he's my escort, it doesn't mean I wanted him to. <laughs> what if I? You know what I mean. I, it it just you, happened. It was a. It was a relationship spark. That's all. It wasn't. I'm sorry, George. What was it? Uh, what What if him and I have a connection and we end up having sex? Well, now, now <laughs> well, it's getting interesting. Or how about this? How about after you meet me, you agree with him, and both of you beat the shit out of me? How about anything could happen? Okay. That's All right. Thank you, George of Kansas. Thank you. Thank you. Good Did you God. see the uh, latest Thirty for Thirty, where the guy bought the original rules of basketball and returned yeah. them to Kansas, and and returned them to the university? Didn't he pay some ridiculous amount of money for them? No, he. He just went around to like the top Kansas donors and, and pleaded with them to put money in. And he got one guy to donate a million dollars. So mm -hmm. it, they call Sotheby's. He's on the phone and it starts off at 1.3 million. And the guy's like, all right, I'll do that. 
and it keeps going up, and it goes up to like three point seven million dollars, and the guy just like, you know, got all into it and didn't want to lose the bet, so he kept bidding, and he eventually paid almost. I think it ends up being like four and a half million with all the fees and everything. The guy. Is you mean like the guy Naismith who wrote the rules of yeah, basketball? Yeah, Naismith's copy that he like right. has adjusted over at the YMCA. He did it. He was at the YMCA and he put yeah. a beach basket up or something, and you bounce the ball. And so now that is in Kansas somewhere. That's so a- they did it all, and this guy got it and he donated it to Kansas. To the university. Because they that's where Naismith coached. He was coached their first basketball team, and they have mm-hmm. Naismith drive. If I was the University of Kansas, I would try and sell that. They'll probably get, like, you know, $80,000 for it. <laughs> uh, and use that for some sort of scholarship or something, right? Because to see the pencil, you know, markings of some guy that thought of a peach basket game. The ball didn't even that- go through the basket. You had to hit it up with a broomstick. Hit it out of the broomstick after every shot. You had to hit the. You mean he didn't make a hole in the no. basket? <laughs> <laughs> you know how that happened? They they had the basket outside so long, right? They rotted. That they rotted out. They went, hey, that's fun too. <laughs> Keeps coming back to us. We got a sport. Yeah. Let's welcome Ryan Adams. Ryan, welcome to the show. Uh, Hello. That's the same name as the famous singer, isn't it? Ryan Adams? Yeah. Yes. No, that's yes. Brian Adams. There, there is a Brian one. Adams. There is? But there's a Ryan Adams also. He's yeah. more famous than Brian Adams. No, he sure he's is. He's more famous well, than yes, Brian Adams. Well, yes, they are. <laughs> and then what's funny, they're both incredibly more famous than the Ryan Adams that we're now talking to. But, Ryan, you have become uh, a, a famous because of of you made sort of a culinary mistake in the state of Texas, correct? Uh, I, I did. I, yeah. I technically broke the law. Yeah. Um so so how did it how did it all start um that you got in trouble with the uh, game warden and and the authorities in Texas um it had to do with the the unfortunate death of a dove. How how did the dove die? Still don't know exactly what caused the poor thing to do it, but yeah. mm-hmm. somehow it flew headfirst into the the back of my house and broke its neck. Were you uh, watching TV, or what were you doing when it happened, or did you come home and find it dead? No, no, no. This we were at home watching Project Runway, actually. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, what, des- what designer were they showing when the dove decided? Maybe the show. Maybe the dove was watching the same show and said, "Fuck, I can't take this." Bam! Right into the window, you know? Just fucking bam! Oh, wait a second. Wait a minute. Garrett, I want you. Are you ready? Everybody be quiet. You ready? Ready? One, two, three. There it is, right there. That's dove against window. Pretty close. Pretty close. And at first we thought it was a bat. And Mm -hmm. that does happen in this area. We have a couple of bats in Austin. And don't want to mess with bats whatsoever because of rabies. Uh, so, so you would to... never, you would never eat a bat. Mm, that's really tough. I, I, if it was offered to me by somebody that knows what they're doing culinarily, yeah, maybe. You I, know what I you do with a bat? With kind of really weird tasting things. I'm from Louisiana. You make a gumbo. You make a gumbo. You could make a gumbo out of dog shit, and I think it would taste fine. You know, it's it's just a mixture of whatever old meat. Make a gumbo out of it, you know? So now the dove flies into the window. You look out of the window and, uh, you see the dove there. Is it a, it, now doves aren't that big. There's not a whole bunch of meat on them. And, but for right. some reason, from what I've read, you decided to cook that single dove. It, it was the only, it only seemed right. This is a, dove, this is a game bird in Texas. A lot right. of people spend a lot of time, money, an effort to go out and hunt these birds. And this one just dropped right in my lap. 
Why not? It's, it's it's barely enough meat for really much of a meal. Usually, you, you know. You, but but and and uh, had you made dove before? Is it something you've you've shot and eaten before? Uh, I am actually not a hunter yet. Okay. Uh, ever since this nonsense started, I, uh, I I've gone online. I've started taking a hunter's safety course online, and I'll I'll, I'll actually become properly licensed as okay. soon as possible. So, so you take the dove in, and you decide that you're going to cook the dove. Your wife is in on this with you? Yes. Yes, she was. Uh, mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. it, we, I'm currently working my way through a cookbook from an English chef. His name is Fergus Henderson, and he does very traditional English fare. And a lot of that includes awful. Um, I appreciate the fact that, you use the whole animal. If you're going to kill the thing, it's only polite to use all of it. That's just that just makes sense. Well, to me. well, now the feathers. Uh, it says here that you did you pluck the feathers? I did very very carefully. Have you, have you learned? You know, you don't need to do that. You know, I've heard that, but I wanted to. I wanted this was for my website. That's why I cooked just one dove. Oh, like, okay. You know Be yeah, because you know th this is true. This sounds about it. this sounds crazy, but when we're dove hunting, and I, I do hunt, yeah. we we shoot the dove, and then you pick the dove up, and you you grab its neck, and you you twist its head off, and then you put yeah. your thumbs on its breast, and you yeah. literally That's push it. into it, and when you peel the thumbs back, all of the uh, skin on the breast with the with the feathers with it 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 almost comes off so easily you can't believe it it's still warm in your hand you lift the skin with the feathers off the back and you can either leave it like that or you pop the head off and you've got the the fabulous dove breast right there in your hand now that now that really is the way you do it in the field yeah yeah i i do understand that but this was this was I, it's just one of them it's just me right Take my time do it right Eat all okay. of it. And you um, have a fabulous recipe for it, and you uh, place it in the fridge overnight. Many people say that wild uh, birds are better even after you freeze them for a while. I don't know if you know this or not, it, mm. and it breaks some stuff down and all. And and the mistake was that you, you grilled it La, La Mancha style, and you made it with olive oil and salt, and you, you did you stuff the cavity with something? I did. Uh, bay leaf and some sage leaves, and then right before it went on the grill, covered it in bacon grease. Wow, because so it has no bacon, fat. That's bacon what, yeah. getting there. <laughs> yeah, well, you now, have to make sure there's not much fat on the bird. You don't want right. it drying out on you. How, how was it when you ate it? Fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. Mm -hmm. And then when did the and, authorities? when did the authorities come to arrest you? Okay, this is where the story takes a wild turn from what mm -hmm. has been re reported. Mm -hmm. um, they actually have never contacted me. I contacted them. When I found out I might have broken a law, I'm a big boy. If I make a mistake, I own up to it, and I go and talk to the proper people. I wanted to set things right. Talk to a gentleman on the phone from the Texas Wildlife Park Department, and mm -hmm. he was just like, just don't do it again. And that was the end of it. Well, what was the what was the offense? The offense was a a a a, a dove uh, committed suicide, and you ate a game bird without shooting it or having a license, and you told people about it on the internet. Why is that against the law if the the dove came to you dead on its own? Because okay, I, I have actually asked about this, and this is what I was told. Without a proper license, I am not legally allowed to take the dove. It is not mine to take. It is the state of Texas dove. Wow. So it's it's one of those weird corner cases. This is this is on nobody's radar. People take doves in their backyard all the time, and they just don't go out telling everybody like me. Right. So. But once once I contacted them, explained the situation, they were very, very considerate, very understanding, and they just said, go get licensed. And so that's what I'm going to do. 
Now, wait, was it because you put the, this is the typical Internet bullshit, you put it on the Internet mm -hmm. and people started telling you it was against the law, right? And they they started no, logging. You mean you no, no one I, accused you of this? No, no, everybody was just like, all right, that's really odd, which it is. I totally agree. Never done anything like it before, but mm -hmm. if it wasn't a game bird, I wouldn't have even taken the, it would have gone in the trash. So what happened, as far as I know, is the reporter in Dallas contacted the department and asked, Oh. and they said, yeah, this is, this is illegal, but we don't care. And the, as far as I know, the person that the reporter talked to actually said he ate the evidence, we're done. Uh, the, so the spokesman is Stephen Stephen Lightfoot was the spokesman. Yeah, that's the gentleman. And, that's and the gentleman. we contacted yeah, he, him, and he did not want to come on the air and be made fun of. <laughs> uh, it is illegal to possess any wildlife resource that has not been taken legally, said Mr. Lightfoot. By legal, I mean there are certain means and methods. You have um, uh, a hunting license, and you have to have the appropriate weapon and ammunition. A... Mm -hmm. A a um, a glass door is not considered an appropriate weapon and ammunition, and so the dove died, uh, even though it killed itself. It had died without you using the proper weapon and ammunition, and perhaps you put the glass there to attract the dove so that it would kill itself, and that is. That could be considered wrong, even though they don't think that you did that. Now, you would have had the right to eat the bird, said Mr. Lightfoot, if you had legally hunted it. And since those weren't the circumstances, you should have called a game warden and turned that bird over. Sincerely, Stephen Lightfoot, Texas Parks and Wildlife Spokesman. Wow. That is correct. That's amazing. You must love all this because you sound like a big cooking nerd and you're a blogger nerd. and I am. So this is exciting for you, isn't it? Well, uh, it's, it's, I mean, listen it's to him, Gary. Well, ah, he's got a, he's got all the ticks. You, you're excited, too, by this no, I get excited when I get to cook something that I don't normally get to cook, and especially if something I get to cook is very fresh. That's oh exciting, God. too. Exactly. And then what about the wildlife thing? And he, I think he's excited by the whole controversy. This would, that part of the story would make me irritated, though. Yeah. I wouldn't. Uh, they, I, who, I felt really bad for them. They've been taking a lot of heat mm -hmm. over something they actually never, they never contacted me. And so that's, that's what I'm trying to, to tell people because the report that you have on your website is, is just wrong. And I feel bad because they're taking heat over nothing. Don't feel badly for them. You know how many, you know what we do? We have to hide the doves. We take kids with us and get them licenses. Kids can't, they couldn't shoot themselves if you aim the gun right at their head and then had them pull the trigger. But we, we take our 25, you know, dove limit for the brats too. So, uh, let's go to Terry of West Virginia. Terry, have you ever run over uh, something in the road and then eating it. Uh, and if that's during hunting season, we're finding out now that you're not supposed to do that because a truck is not proper ammunition, Terry. Not in the state of West Virginia. We actually have a law called the roadkill bill. You can actually eat something that you kill or you find dead like that dog. Oh, really? So, so in yeah. West Virginia, uh, if a deer were to run into a plate glass window and die, you could just eat it even <laughs> if it was, wasn't deer season. Yeah, and then we actually, wow. uh, a lot of that is donated to homeless shelters. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's, wow. that's brilliant. That's a, wow. that's a great idea. So I well, leave it to West Virginia to do something right for a change. Yes, leave it to them. Thank you very much. Well, listen, uh, uh, Ryan, it was great talking to you, and this is exciting for you. And um, are you now just anxious? Uh, do you sit, sit there by the picture window just hoping that, you know, like a hawk or something flies into the window and you just try and cook that up too? God, no. At this point, I, I, I'm not looking for any more uh, insanity from random animals hitting my house and and dying. Are you setting? Well, I've had enough. I will go ahead, Gary. Go ahead. Are you setting any animal boob, booby traps to make it look like they accidentally tripped in your yard? 
Yeah. He's like, oh, no. <laughs> Why do you have a three-legged squirrel here, sir? Why is this? Uh... Now, listen, I'm going to open up a door for you. You live in Texas, and I'm going to I'm going to tell you something, and you're not going to believe it. You should try squirrel. You've already started with dove. Certainly there's pheasant. You should, you should uh, cook all of the wild animals you can. You will be surprised how delicious. Now, this sounds really crazy. You know, there are people that eat mountain lion and say it tastes like, um, like, like a pork chop. And, and so, but squirrel can be good. I don't, you know, you can't eat armadillo. You know, armadillo has a bacteria on its shell that's really dangerous. You know, like a salmonella. Yeah, but, leprosy. But leprosy also. That's exactly right. I mean, they're really, really dangerous. And I think people ate them, you know, a hundred years ago or so. But you should start uh, eating. Now, do you have a squirrels? Do you ever have a little rabbit hop through your yard there in Texas? We have uh, we have a couple of rabbits living under our storage house outside, actually, yeah. and uh, mm -hmm. no intention of of going after them. You put uh, some feed. <laughs> you put some feed, uh, and you and this is how you, you you make your own weapon. And the little rabbit sees the feed, but there's a plate glass window in front of it. And then without him knowing it, you just grab the rabbit and throw him into the plate glass window, and then you cook it. That's what you should do. Oh, rabbit's delicious. Yeah. Rabbit is it's really, really wonderful when cooked right. Not a yeah. lot of fat, so you have to be careful. But, right. yeah, no, rabbit's great. And I have had squirrel before. Um, squirrel is really wonderful, too. Very uh, tasty. Kind of oily. Yeah. Yeah, it is a little oily, but it's very tasty. Well, Ryan Adams, uh, where can people uh, contact you after hearing this interview at SiriusXM? Where can they? Is there a website going? Where can they see the recipe? Um, they can come to my website, which is nose to tail at home dot com. <laughs> what is the um, what is the French word? What is the Italian word for dove? Is it? Oh. Is it Pal is it Palumbo? Christina? You're gonna have to yes. get the internet for that. Christina Palumbo is Palumbo is Italian for dove. Did you know that, Ryan? I have learned something today. <laughs> yeah. Now what what is French for dove, Garrett? What is French for dove and what is French for glass? Because what you want to do is you want to give it a name. So you want a French name. You want to get the French name or the Italian oh. name for Dove, and you want to have it like Palumbo, a la, and whatever glass is, you know. Under glass. And what is it? You should do Dove, dove under glass in French. You can do that. that you, whatever that is, Dove under glass in French, right? Can I burst or, someone's bubble real quick? What is it? Palumbo. Columbo. Oh, Columbo oh, really? is is dove. Columbo a... is dove. Ooh, I don't yeah. know if that sounds good. Columbo under. Well, glass. then you know what you would I call so it. So many people tell me it was not that. It was oh, well, one you, you know what you would call it? Columbo a la Peter Falk. That's what you would call uh, the dove, because doesn't it look like somebody smashed his head into a glass and made him have only one eye, Garrett? You know, when he was beaten in some fight. I think French would sound better. Um, Italian words sometimes are a tad heavy, you know. Well, I had a big old piece of Colombo last night. You know, that doesn't sound good at all. Um, um, In French, it's uh, Paloma de Cristal. Oh, that's oh. fabulous. Paloma de Cristal, yeah. Paloma de Cristal, Paloma de Cristal. that sounds fantastic. And they would say, now, how did this happen? Well, uh, this dove flew into my special plate glass window that i have outside that that looks like it's it's like wheat and then they ran, they go to eat the wheat but it's a window and they die instantly so. in italian it's columba de vetro columba de vetro mm, i like the first one i like the first one yeah, i yeah. agree the, the french version is is much more elegant in arabic mm -hmm. it's a bunch of squiggly lines i can't read Right. Uh, let's go to Larry of Pennsylvania. Larry, how enlightening was this, that the dove flew into the window, the guy got on, on line uh, three right there. It flies into the window, it dies, he gets it, he cooks it, goes online, gets in trouble in Texas. What an exciting story, huh, Larry? I think the guy got dead bodies in the basement from the sound of his voice. <laughs> you think Ryan Adams has dead bodies in his basement. Why, why would you say that? Well, he's got a strange voice. 
But uh, I live in the country. I got a lot of animals commit suicide in my yard. I just don't tell nobody about it. You don't tell anyone about it, Ryan. That's what I'm thinking. You got to keep your big blog shut. Okay, that's what you got to do. So. All right. Larry of Pennsylvania thinks you sound like someone who has dead bodies. What do you do for a living when you're not writing your blog thing? I uh, work for a graphics company out in uh, Santa Clara. They have a satellite office here in Austin. So mm -hmm. just right. straight, simple software engineering. Very boring. <laughs> right. Ryan Adams uh, and uh, Cook the Cook the Dove to commit a suicide and got in trouble. Okay, thank you. <laughs> thank you very much, Ryan Adams. Thank you. <laughs> He was a lot more fun than the guy with the with the escort service. Yeah. That guy got all pissed off. Uh, by the way, um, about, I don't know, right before we were going to break, someone called up and said the FBI had uh, stopped another uh, bomb plot. And they have one up there in, in Saugerties, New York, right? They had one in, they did something in Chicago also. And they've caught a couple of people out in California. The weird thing is, is almost every one of the groups that they've caught, the the people, whoever these, these guys were, and this is a single guy that I'll read about in a moment, they made some noise like they wanted to do harm. And somebody told the FBI, so an FBI kind of undercover person finds them or, or you know, works them, and then the authorities are the ones that really made the plot gel. They got the equipment. They got the fake bomb. They got the guns. They rented the truck. They did everything. And then right when the person, you know, thinks they're going to blow something up, they say, okay, we're the FBI, and that's not a real bomb, and you're under arrest. And... What's weird is is that when you hear these people, when I give you this guy's name and tell you who he is, they should have done exactly what they did to this guy, Ryan Adams. They should go, hey, asshole, hey, you know, you know, Muslim idiot, asshole guy, we know you're trying to blow shit up. We know you're nuts. So fucking stop it because now we got our eye on you, okay? And they, millions of dollars were wasted on Quasi Mohammed Rezwanul Ashan Nevis, uh, federal prosecutors have charged the 21 year old Bangladeshi man for conspiring to blow up the Federal Reserve Bank of New York. The FBI, when they first contacted him, said, Well, uh, undercover, what would you like to do? And his quote was, I want to. Something really, really, really big that will make a national impression when it blows up. I don't want something that's like small. I mean, I want something big, very, 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 very big that will shake the entire country. So the undercover FBI agent said, well, why don't we blow up? the Federal Reserve Bank of New York. And Mr. Nafis said, okay. And so they would meet in Queens, and they would record Mr. Nafis' statements. He had grand but vague plans. Did you hear what I just said? No, none of his friends joined with him. He didn't have any, you know, compadres. He had no... You know, nobody from the, you know, the Islamic Brotherhood. On a Wednesday morning, they drove to a warehouse and assembled the fake bomb, placing the supposedly explosive material in trash bins. And then the FBI agents, who had helped Mr. Nafis rent a van, helped him load the van with the fake bombs. Then they assembled the fake detonator, Garrett, that was going to be triggered by a cell phone. And they drove to the fortress-like Federal Reserve Bank of New York, the largest bank, bank structure in the world when it was completed in 1924. Mr. Nafis and the undercover agent parked the van outside of the bank. 
Then they went to a nearby hotel where Mr. Novice recorded a video statement addressing the American people, which he wanted run after the big attack. We will not stop until we attain victory and martyrdom. He then dialed the cell phone repeatedly. The bomb didn't go off, Garrett. He kept dialing and dialing and dialing, oh. and finally he was arrested. Does that even sound like, I mean, they could have stopped him in one minute, you know? He's a little skinny. He was 20 years old when he started. He's a little skinny, nutcase, you know, Muslim guy from, from Bangladesh. Doesn't know what the fuck he's doing. He's going to go to jail for 99 years. But he didn't know where to get a bomb or blow anything up. I mean, you know, like, a, a lot of these stories that come out, it's like, the FBI or whatever group catches them provided them with 97% of the ideas, the materials, the house yeah. to live in. It's like yeah. they're yeah. making a terrorist just so they can arrest them and say, look what we're doing. Let's take the guy that I called Corn Cobb earlier, right? Yeah. That guy is ready to go right now. That That guy is dangerously on some sort of edge. And he, you know, wants to meet me in an airport and fight me and everything else. Okay, let's say that this guy puts his two little girls in in one of those you know shitty daycare things, you know, and um, and his drug addict wife or whatever can't take care of him, whatever his sob story is, right? Let's say somebody gets a hold of him. They go, "Hey, man, we hear you want to um, kill some important people that you think are better than you." That's right. Well, why don't we make a list? What do you mean? Why don't we make, you and me, yeah, we're going to make a list, and why don't we figure out ways that we can kill him? Now, this is the undercover agent talking. And the guy would just be a threatener and a, and a nut. Let some FBI guy get a hold of old corn cob, and my life suddenly is really in danger. The odds of corn cob, you know, ever leaving, you know, the padded room or wherever he lives with his mother, um, you know, and his two estranged children. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Somebody could have turned that guy into something. They could have turned him into, into you know, uh, Timothy McVeigh. Yeah. Yeah, this is ridiculous. If they went into any of those crazy militias who have their motorcycle rides on the weekends and the Confederate flags and their stocking guns and all like that, they tell those guys, we're going to get you dynamite and we're going to get you. A... The other day they arrested a guy and he had a cannon. They found a guy with a cannon, like like it was like a Civil War cannon, a cannon, but it was cannon. No, no, a real cannon. Oh. But they had provided him with weapons and guns. And finally, one of the guys says, "Hey, you know, we got a cannon back in the." Uh... <laughs> so they sold him a cannon. Then they arrested him oh for accepting illegal weapons. I I was dying laughing. I go well. Never in a million. Look, if you if you pulled into my driveway and told my son you had a cannon for sale, he's buying it, whether it's legal yeah. or not. He's buying a fucking machine gun. I see cannons sold on Pawn Stars all the time. Yeah, yeah, they have to have a license to do it. Yeah, of course they don't. You know, you have to read the disclaimer. But you know, I just don't believe for one minute that we had to waste the manpower, the energy, the money, or or whatever. To talk quasi Mohammed Reswanol Ashan Novice. How about this? How about that name alone should have gotten him deported? It's just, you know, if you like all four of those names, if they'd have gone to his house and, you know, his father comes out wearing a white shirt, Garrett, that has some kind of lentil soup stains on it, because, you know, that's what they eat all the time. And the, the 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 mother's in the back kind of covered up a little bit, but not all the way. You know, a very nice, middle-class, working-class Muslim family. Okay? Mr. Uh, Nefes, what is it? What is it? Your son, Quasi? What's the matter with Quasi? Well, he's been telling people he wants to blow, you know, American shit up. Quasi, get in here. What is it? God damn it. God damn you. He'd have beaten the shit out of the kid, and that would have been the end of it, right or wrong? Yeah. Right or Yeah. yeah especially a his Muslim, little... 
His Muslim dad would have beaten the piss out of him. His mother would have come out of the kitchen, you know, wearing that kind of checkered fucking clothing that they wear, going, oh, oh, and all of that bullshit. And that would have been the end of it. That would have been, and, and so that would have been it. And they would have said, we have our eye on you. We're going to sue you. We're going to sue your kid. We're going to, if anything fucking even blows up in New York, we're coming to get your kid first. That's it. That's all they had to do. That's it. And you better get him some fucking, you know, psychological stuff. He didn't have a bomb, nothing. And they made the detonator so easy that when they, the guy pulled the detonator out, and this guy, Quasi, says, well, how do we make the bomb blow up? He goes, don't worry, I'll give you a phone number, and when you dial it, the bomb will automatically blow up. So he didn't really make... He didn't make anything. Yeah, he didn't even connect them somehow. No. Thinking that they were going to work. He was just told. But one day, some guy is going to use the FBI to get all this equipment, Mm -hmm. and then when they think they're watching him, he'll elude them somehow and then use it really. (sighs) Hmm. And then what do they do? You might have yourself a movie there, my friend. Yeah. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Uh, Trademark. (laughs) Patent pending. No, no, I heard it first. <laughs> I was already thinking it. Now you know that that I had uh, I, this is years ago, and this guy drew a cartoon. It was a NASCAR superhero. It was way out of its time, and I don't even think they've ever done it. But this guy drew this NASCAR superhero, and and he was friends with me and my accountant, and we invested. Oh, I don't know, uh, fifty or seventy-five thousand dollars or whatever, and he, we got all kind of big sponsors, and NASCAR was helping us, and it was really going to be a a big deal. And I signed a non-disclosure uh, form with him, right, that I wouldn't say anything about it for a year, or talk about it, or joke about it, or anything. I was hosting the um, animation awards on the Fox Television Network. The guy that we'd had to deal with. He said he had met with Fox, and and the guy had and he just told us he had met with Fox, right? And he pitched the idea to the Fox guy. Well, I go to the animation thing, and there's the vice president of whatever it was at Fox. So I go over to him and I go, "Hey, man, um, you know Joe White, who who brought this? Uh, he had a meeting with you a couple of weeks ago about this uh, NASCAR superhero." And the guy goes. Um, who now? And I said, you know, the guy said his name, and I said he met with you, and then he goes, oh, oh, yeah, you know, we had had that idea about a year ago. That's what he said to me. I went, what? He goes, yeah, yeah, we, we, we had that idea about a year ago, and so we've already started work on it. I called the guy up. I said, hey, man, you met with the guy. He's totally full of shit, and you told him your idea. And, of course, they're saying they're, they're going to probably post-date all sorts of notes, and they're going to say they had the idea a year ago and completely fuck us. And the guy says, I'm going to sue you for mentioning it. That's what he said to me. What? Yeah. I'm going to sue you for mentioning it. I said, maybe I mentioned it, asshole, but they've already fucked us. Okay, yeah, that's all you got to do at these big companies. Ah, uh, we got that. We've been working on that. We got it worked on. Now it never came out. Never happened. Hmm. I never got one penny back. But you know what? I didn't. I don't mind investing. It was a good idea. We, we had the drawings. You know, I played it for my kids. You know, we had a great time. They never. They never made. Oh God, they can't wait for guys to fly from South Carolina and pitch your shit. Okay, Garrett, thank you very much. Thank you for coming in. You know, then you get a note, dear Garrett. You know, you know, we've been in we've been in talks about a year with an Arab fellow, who did the very same thing you pitched to us. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's go to um, Nathan, who is in Cape Girardeau, Missouri, um, about thirty miles from where my sister-in-law uh, of the Heckemeyer family uh, lives in Sykeston, Missouri. Ah, uh, yes, Nathan of Cape Girardeau. Go ahead. Hey, that would be Federal Reserve Bomber. You know where he went to college at? Where? Jacksonville State. Oh. 
He went. He's the the Mister. Uh, let me get his name here. Muhammad something or other. No, wait a minute. We can't do that. We got to give all the names. Quasi Muhammad Reswanol Ashan Nafis. Yeah. Now, what was, was he doing in Cape Girardeau? How would he get uh, there to go to school? Well, he did, he went to Simo. So now in Cape Girardeau, we have Rush Limbaugh. Mm-hmm. We have this weird bomber guy. Mm-hmm. And we have the Koran burning pastor down in Florida, all from Cape Toronto. And you have that Rico Suave song. Huh? What? What? Garrett, shut up. Yeah. You know what? Nathan sounds like he works here, okay, the way that he just responded to you. Somebody from Cape Girardo was a guest on our show recently also. So. Lambert Scott. Hold on a minute now. Wait a second. Wait a minute now. He's going to play a song, and in the song it says Cape Girardo. No, it's by Gerardo. Oh, it's by Gerardo. <laughs> Everyone knows this song. Ah, oh, well. Rico. Rico. <laughs> All right. Thanks a lot. Uh, let's go to Jim, who's in Michigan. Uh, yes, Jim, it's Jay Thomas. Thanks for calling us at 888-4-102-102. Yes, Jim, go ahead. Good afternoon, Jay. Mm-hmm. You have to... You got to be able to see through all the bullshit. Uh, this is making Obama look good. Yeah, he set it up. He he squashed the terrorism. It will be his next commercial. Oh, I see what you're saying. I see. Yeah, uh, you know I got gotcha. you. Well, you're right. You know what? Look, I don't disagree with you. I don't disagree at all because it is the stupidest thing I have ever seen. And and you know what? I believe that these um, bombers. I bet if we met them, we would. All, they probably wouldn't pass the sanity test. You know what I mean? <laughs> I mean it. You know what? You know what, dude? I, I hate your fucking politics. I'm sorry. Well, I'm sorry. I hate your fucking politics, but I cannot miss your show, dude. You, 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 you do a fine job. So, well, listen. Well, you you can hate my politics if you if you you're if you want Bubba to. Right out of work. No, I had nothing Bubba's to do with high. Bubba. Well, hey, no, by no, the no, way, Garrett, we're trying to get. Hey, Garrett, we replaced I'm, him and I I'm love trying to get Rick Flair to come to my house and do something with my wife. <laughs> oh, no, no. <laughs> I'm telling yeah. you. Yeah. Come on in, Rick. Come on in, Rick. Go get her, boy. Go get her. I'm trying to get Rick Flair to fuck one of my dogs. That's what I'm working on right now. now I'm going to put that on online. All right, Jim of Michigan, thank you. Thank you very much. Todd, Seattle, do you think that this was, this sounds like a real talk show now, do you think that this was something that Barack Obama has tried to do to prove to the American public that one of his cousins is a bomber? <laughs> I don't know why I said that. I have just, um, when I heard this this morning, I seem to remember that four years ago, when we were coming up to the president, the uh, yeah. Russians, that weeks before, they did the same thing. And, and it was kind of the same kind of a, when you read it, it sounded like it was a, more of a setup. It was kind of the same type deal. You know, now, I'm not a conspiracy nut, but I just remembered that something just before the elections, uh, four years ago, that there was a, they found a bunch of bombers or attempted bombers. No, that's in Saugerties. Uh, that's in upstate New York, if it's the one you're thinking of. There was also one in, Ch- in Chicago, I believe. They they go to a mosque, and they're in, and you're right, and, it now it, and those guys ended up going to jail just in the last year or so. But I've read a bunch of articles about it, and when you read it, and, and the investigative reporter said this was such a ridiculous setup. These out-of-work Muslim kids are hanging around the mosque. And, look, if you went into the ghetto and you said to some kids in the corner, hey, look, we're bringing in, you know, a kilo of cocaine tonight. Um, can you guys get a bunch of guys and guns and come help us? Right. Well, gonna I'm going to tell you right now, I could drive to the Ninth Ward and I could gather up an army of individuals who would go down to the riverfront with me and protect me and drive me. And I was going to give them all like 500 bucks or whatever. And we were going to get this this kilo of coke coming off of a boat. And then I would arrest all of them for what? For helping me smuggle yeah. shit? I mean, I could do that in a minute. It's fishy, doesn't it? It, it, no, it's you know, dumb. Like it's say, weird. Conspiracy nut, but it is. It is just odd that just weeks before the election, here it is again. And I remember distinctively four years ago, same type thing. 
Uh, well, here's the other here's the other thing. Let's say the kid really wanted to blow something up, and an informer. Who's the informer? It's a guy at the mosque that the FBI is paying, right? Sure. So the informer says, look, there's a guy that wants to blow something up. In every movie you've ever seen, they wait for the perpetrator to do something. So they watch yeah. him. And they have the they go, Well, what do you know? He goes, Well, he's having trouble finding a bomb. Oh. Okay, he, and no one, he's crazy, he's crazy, and none of the Muslims from the mosque want to be with him because he's nuts. Oh, well, how about if we give him a bomb? Yeah, and so they go give him a fucking bomb. I mean, what I'm saying is, is all you have to say is, we got our, we got our eye on you, and tell his parents, and he's in tremendous, do you have any children? Yeah. Okay. I had a son that that called in a bomb threat. Have you ever heard me tell that story? Oh yeah, I talked. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Now that wasn't a joke. And the and the no. SWAT team came to my house, surrounded my house, and that kid was sitting in the living room and didn't realize that they were there for him. And so these two plainclothes cops are sitting there. My wife is almost in tears, and the guys start describing why they're there. And my son sitting on the couch goes. Oh, oh, that's me, like that. That's what he said. He didn't understand why we're having a meeting with the people and why there was a SWAT team. There were two guys with, with I don't know what kind of crazy guns, with bulletproof vests. One was in my driveway. I'm not joking. And one was by oh, yeah. my front door. Now, they didn't, they didn't set my kid up and and get him some bombs and he and his you know what i'm saying they didn't they, they didn't, didn't along. yeah yeah but he why and he wouldn't have gone along with it but they came to our house and i said after they left i said first of all you know i got to get a lawyer and i got to go down to the sheriff and we are punishing this kid and and they said okay you're going to take care of it and all that so but they could have turned my kid into a bomber for god's sakes easily sure. easily could have sure. done it yeah yeah, well, yeah. I, I just think it's kind of odd that four years Maybe. ago the same thing came out. So. Maybe. By the way, there was really something that did not make the front page. Did you know that somebody shot a hole in the window of the Denver Obama campaign headquarters? They took a gun, yeah. there were people inside, and they shot into the window and, and, and blew the window out. Did you know this? No, I hadn't heard of this. It, it's on page, like, 19 of every newspaper. That is really weird to me. I would think that would have, and it happened right after the debate. And I thought, I wonder why this isn't headlines, you know? Bigger you know where it's headlines, Garrett? The Huffington Post or the Daily Beast. You know, that's like reading Drudge or looking at, you know, um, uh, what's his name, you know, Glenn Beck's site. You know, yeah. I mean, it's just, it's so slanted, you know, and Arianna Huffington, you know, in it for the money, 100%. Her husband was absolutely an avowed gay man. She had two kids with him. He ran for the United States Senate, lost, said, whoops, I'm gay, and she divorced him and moves to Washington. My God. Unbelievable. All right, thank you, Todd. Steve, Marilyn, yes, sir. Go ahead, Steve of Maryland. Yeah. Yeah, you know, the, the federal government's doing the same thing up here in Maryland. Last summer they caught a young uh, African-American kid that converted to Muslim, and they set him up for blowing up a recruiting station. You know, same <laughs> scenario as the guy up there. Just yesterday in the Baltimore Sun, they had an article, just like you mentioned, they, uh, the ATF and the local police found some kids who would help on a drug deal to deliver some drugs. They were all arrested. Uh, you know, hey, can you help us out? Here's what's in it. Here's some guns. Or if you have your own, if you can get a gun, bring it. Hey, Steve, and, if somebody offered yeah. you and I enough money and we believed them for one time, I, you and I would drive down to Key West and to make a quick ten grand. I would do it. And go, hey, you know, Steve, we're going to go down. All, you know, we're just going to like drive the guy down and drop him off. We'll be there. All expenses paid, and then they give us ten grand. Would you not do that? 
depends what it was, but at some price. Drugs. You know, We're we bringing are. drugs in. You and I are going to make ten grand in Key oh, West. Well, in all fairness, I don't need ten grand. But with that being said, fifty grand, grand fifty grand, fifty grand a piece. It'd be a bigger number for me, but but nevertheless. I Hunter, hold on a second. Wait a minute. Hold it, Steve. Hold it, Steve. Hold it. Human trafficking, one million dollars. We're going to bring humans in. They're going to be white slaves, Garrett. Human Newman or humans? <laughs> no, humans. We're yeah. going to bring humans in. First of all, the FBI could say they're going to do anything, and they'll give you any amount of money. Right? <laughs> right. Yeah. So they get, and I'm going to give you a five thousand uh, dollar down payment. You know. Well, show you my, you know, my goodwill. Yeah. yeah. So. In theory, I would go for that stuff, but in reality, if you consider my everyday boring life that someone walked up and offered me that, yep. I'd say, when you graduate from FBI Academy? Okay. All right, yeah, uh, Steve. Anyway. You know what, Garrett? He would sniff him out. Thank you, Steve of yeah. Maryland. Let's go to Susan, who is in Indiana. Boy, Susan, we have opened a real conspiracy door, haven't we? This is unbelievable. Uh, am I on? You're on right now. Yes, you are. I'm on. Okay. You know, my one brother did three tours in Afghanistan. My other brother works for customs. And I have to tell you, if you honestly think that the government is trying to set these kids up, it's very naive. My one brother is constantly finding kids crossing borders who are here on supposedly student visas. And as it turns out, they are on terrorist watch because of the activity they've been involved in. There are so many terrorist cells in this country you cannot possibly imagine. You would flip your lid if you knew what was really going on. I'm not even told about this. I'm just, you know, I get some stories, and it's frightening. It's frightening what went on. Now, wait a minute now, Susan. You're getting the stories from your, your brother who does this for a living and works for the government, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I right, trust my right. brother. I trust well, my wait, brother. Wait, wait, Susan, Susan. I wonder if, the if Susan, here. if there are no terrorists coming in, if he has no stories of terrorism, your brother doesn't have a job. So your brother, of course, is your brother's making up the stories about the terrorists. He's he's in there with them. Your brother is part of the conspiracy. Don't be naive. Oh, for God's sake, Jay! People travel back and forth. He always says you have to have border people because people travel back and forth. We live in a border. Your brother is trying just to keep his job. So it, it's just like the United States That's told us nice. forever that the Russians had all of these bombs. This is the truth. And they didn't. They were going broke. And we had missile after missile. When they finally tore the Iron Curtain down and the walls and all that, we had outgunned them. Now, this is a real stat. A million to one we had outgunned them. And the Russians finally said, you know what? We didn't have anything and we knew you guys were going to wipe us off the face of the earth and so we went broke trying to keep up with and the united states knew it the whole time but they got billions of dollars to build every missile and bomber and everything else your brother is part of that conspiracy i don't know where you got that statistic from because i have a friend who's an engineer she was an engineer who moved here from russia and her parents were nuclear engineers and I don't believe that for a moment. Their parents couldn't leave the country because they were nuclear engineers, and that is absolutely not true. And I will argue that to the death. That is absolutely true. It is also documented, and all you have to do is look at You know what's sad about you, Susan? You live with a bunch of complete conspiracy people to keep their government jobs. It's a shame, isn't it, Garrett? You, your brother, your Russian... sinker, Susan. Wait a second. Your Russian friends. So you've got Russian friends and a brother that works for the Border Patrol. I find your entire thing suspect. Your entire story. Yeah, you're, I don't know any, hold it a minute. Christina, do you know any Russians that worked at nuclear plants? There's a huge Russian population. No. There's a lot of no. Russians here. And a lot of Russians in Indiana? I don't think so. I don't think so. You need to get out. You need to get out more. Yeah. I don't know where right. you are, but you know what? Hey, you know what, Susan? I'm going to hang up, and we're going to turn your number over immediately to our yeah. Sirius XM security force. Who runs our security force, that. Garrett? You What's the person's that. name? His name's What's Craig. That woman? You do that. Not Craig. Who's that woman's name that you get your, your little tag from in the office? What's her name? 
I go in there and I lose oh, my. She scares me. What's her name? What's her name? I don't know. I'm too afraid to ask. You know what, Susan? Keep her on the line. Trace this call, Garrett. Let's find out exactly. Two four eight seven. Yeah, we got it. We got that number. You better hang up. You better hang up. Oh my God, she did. You better get out of here. We're gonna get you. We're gonna get you. I trust my brother. Yeah, that's what the Rosenberg said. <laughs> oh, man, she couldn't hang up fast enough. Oh, boy. <laughs> Rick of Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. Did you know there were a lot of Russians in Indiana? I had never heard that before. There's a lot of Yeah, I just had heard I that. Just a, You know what? And I'm surprised that Bobby Knight, when he was there, didn't have a lot of big Russian center, Garrett, you know, like seven foot two, you know, a guy named Igor. Uh, yes, Rick, go ahead. Yeah, I just wanted to say, you know, about this guy that, you know, the terrorist, uh, he, he, you know, you're saying about going to his family and telling yeah. on him, but yeah. he, he's not from the United States. He came in on, uh, you know, just as a student and went to school for one semester and, you know, and then after that just tried to hook up with other people that were trying to, you know, blow up the United States. All right, well, let me, let me read this here because... Um, I'm, I'm, um, I'm seeing that, that they caught him within a matter of, they knew he was doing this. He, he was so dumb that he just went up to somebody and he tried to make contacts and recruit people to form a terrorist cell. And they called the cops within like an hour of him doing it. So he was but really he's not, obvious. He's not, him and his family aren't from the United States though. He came here. To go to school, and then, um, you know, in January he got into the United States, and then he he went to school for a semester, and then just spent all his time trying to hook up with other people. Well, I'm going to tell you right now that you've fallen for a hook, line, and sinker. I think that the government allowed quasi Mohammed Reswanal Ashan Nafis to come into the country, knowing that they could absolutely set him up and and get this um, uh, conviction right before the election to put Barack Obama over the top. I absolutely they knew he was a terrorist or that he could be talked into this. Don't you think, Garrett, from the very yes. beginning? Absolutely. Absolutely. You know what? Uh, would you please turn uh, 718 and you know the other four numbers, yep. into our security office also. Uh, Rick of uh, Harrisburg, PA, uh, please stay on the line so we can get a good, clean copy of this uh, phone line. Uh, you know what? I'm glad the show is over, Garrett. I'm a little frightened by what's happening. I really am. Um, I'm really glad I'm not in New York where you guys have to step out from 1221 6th Avenue. Shut up. Right by the smoke in the no smoking sign. Uh, you know. All right. Well, good. Uh, Rick, did you have a good time today before you, before you commit some sort of murder or kill a dove or, or maybe turn yourself into a gigolo? Tomorrow morning, Michael Chiklis, the big movie star, will sing on Howard 101 with me, Jay Thomas. See you later. Let's go.